audiobook title My Summon to Another World was even weirder than I expected, 01 to 26, by Taoist QXCL. Chapter 1 Beginnings. Beep beep beep. From between the sheets of one of the rooms of a humble house in a small neighborhood, a trembling hand reached for the alarm clock next to the bed with alternating intentions of turning it off and breaking it. Finally, after much hesitation, the owner of the hand decided to turn off the alarm clock, after which he grabbed the glasses that were next to it with a little more anger accumulating in his heart. Maybe the next time the result will be different. Little by little the sheets slide towards the ground, exposing what was hidden by them. Zack slowly opened his eyes as he got up and went to the bathroom with trembling steps. As he approached the mirror, he was able to reflect his figure, which grew larger with each step. When he got to the bathroom, he got ready to school, today is Friday after all. Zack is an ordinary 16-year-old boy, nothing has ever happened in his life to prove that Zack was more special than a stone on the ground. Zack's parents are top lawyers in the country and, as a result, they are extremely busy every day. At least Zack can remember a time when his parents weren't working on an extremely important case that couldn't wait to do things like normal families so Zack had a lonely childhood. That doesn't mean he hates his parents. Zack feels grateful to them for the opportunities they work to give him. However, his absence also meant that Zack had to mature earlier. That together with his parents' desire for him to enter a good university caused Zack to move to study in the capital while his parents advanced their careers abroad. Although Zack does not neglect his studies, due to the lack of interaction with people in his childhood Zack has two defects. Difficulty interacting with other people and passion for reading. Being from a wealthy family, Zack's parents made sure to provide him with a strict education from a very young age, which caused him not to have relationships with other children his age. In his free time, and to get away from his studies, Zack looked for a way to entertain himself. Unfortunately, Zack's parents used his house almost exclusively for sleeping so there weren't many forms of entertainment. The only thing apart from the basic necessities of any family were books, and without anything else to do Zack began to read. It didn't matter if it was fact or fiction, Zack got to read all the books in his house. The first gift he asked his father for his birthday was books. And this is how Zack is known by all his classmates, a lonely geek only accompanied by a book in his hand every single moment of the week. After taking a shower and changing clothes, Zack looked at the time and decided to go to school early. Zack can't be considered attractive, but people wouldn't be upset by his appearance. He has soft features and common black hair that give him a calm appearance. Added to his glasses that give him an intellectual air couple his average height of 1.75 meters will make Zack go unnoticed on most occasions. Zack turned around before leaving his apartment to make sure he hadn't forgotten anything. After one last check, Zack nodded his head with satisfaction, and went to his school like any other day. Only God knows that this day will be completely different from the rest. In a huge room with large windows that showed the beautiful views of the outside and walls describing great deeds carried out by heroes of the past accompanied by beautiful decorations that gave the room a touch of elegance, there was a group of people wearing embroidered robes saying words whose meaning it was beyond what most could decipher as. They formed a circle in the center of the room. Outside the circle were two people talking quietly not wanting to distract the robed figures from the mission they had been given. Is everything ready for the ceremony? Asked the figure on the right, a fat man with a small mustache adorning his face. Dressed in official clothes a little tight for the bulging figure that threatened to burst from one moment to the next as he looked nervously at what was happening before him. Yes, Prime Minister. Everything is ready. In a few moments we can start, answered his counterpart. An elderly robed figure with much fewer beads who looked at the circle with impassive eyes. Good. Remember that we cannot fail his majesty. His patience is wearing thin, the prime minister said lightly, but if one knew him well, he would appreciate the concern in his eyes. Clearly the king they mention is not someone compassionate. The Parmi's kingdom is a country located in the northern part of the central continent. Despite its incredible military power, its soldiers are in constant war with the demonic continent of the north, and its constant invasions to occupy the lands of the central continent. This situation has caused the kingdom of Parmis to block the demon's offensive while the rest of the countries around it enjoy the enormous resources of the continent and uninterrupted peace at the cost of the lives of Parmis soldiers. The king has been dissatisfied with this status quo for a long time, and despite repeated requests for help to bear the burden of war with the neighboring countries and the multiple responses received, the amount of real support that has reached the borders is almost inexistent. Remembering the anger in the king's eyes when the messengers praised his efforts with arrogant eyes sent a shiver down the prime minister's spine. 
He was sure that if it weren't for the fear of being besieged on multiple fronts at once, the destination of those messengers would have been the deepest torture chambers in the palace. Don't worry, we have already checked multiple times. The ceremony will be a success and his majesty will get the heroes he needs replied the other figure with respect in his voice towards the royal family. If that respect was true or false only he knew, although there was a hint of humor in his eyes. The old magician knew very well the character of the current king, where others see greatness, he only saw greed and desire for conquest. A person who allows those around him nothing but total submission. Having someone like that as a king isn't exactly ideal for nobles, mages, or even commoners. Fortunately it is this same lust for power that keeps the king busy with foreign affairs, allowing each nobleman to rule his territory with a certain degree of independence and maintain a balanced situation in the country. The current situation in the kingdom is closest to peace than it has been in hundreds of years. Even if a large part of the troops are stationed on the border of the kingdom, large-scale clashes rarely occur, and with the threat from the north, neighboring countries do not dare to declare war for fear that troops will be diverted from the north, and the demons bypass the kingdom defenses to attack them. Wizards don't hate this situation. Peace means time to research and develop their magic. No wizard worth their salt would wish for a true war, as it would mean abandoning their studies and going to the front lines where they could die. As for honor and glory, he, they are magicians, there is no one more noble in the continent than them. A trace of pity appeared in the eyes of the mage as he watched the performance of his men. The ritual that was being prepared in front of him had been used on previous occasions when humanity was on the brink of extinction as humanity's last hope. Now he was just another tool of power for an arrogant, narrow-minded man with ambitions of greatness. In fact, he was sure that if the army was not limited by the demonic hordes, the central continent would be engulfed in war, war caused by the current king. The prime minister was going to answer him when suddenly the circle on the floor of the room began to shine, and a solemn atmosphere permeated the room. The heart of both people skips a beat from the amount of mana in the room. Soon the mana converges into the center. Green lights start to shine all over the place as the mana starts creating all kinds of geometric shapes all over the place. The ritual has begun. 14. Chapter 2, Still Beginnings Zack entered his class with an open book in his hands and went to his seat trying to ignore the noise caused by his classmates. Despite being a class of fewer than 30 people, like most classes, it is divided into small groups that hung out together. Among these groups were athletes, geeks, girls, or model students. Rarely did these groups talk to each other more than was strictly necessary, as if it were demeaning for an athlete to talk to a geek. And that is something that Zack, a loner, has never been able to understand. I guess he has something to do with the status within the group, Zack thought. But he didn't delve too deeply into these issues because those questions would generate more questions leading to an endless loop that could be answered very simply from the start. Teenagers are idiots. Seeing the chaos around him, Zack could only feel pure admiration for the teachers who come here every day voluntarily to try to put some order in the classroom and knowledge in the students. Zack left his backpack on the table and took out a book to read while he waited for the teacher to start class. After that, he could go home to change the book he was about to finish for another one he had bought yesterday. But of course, things don't always go the way you want them to. What the f asterisk ck do you think you're doing? Suddenly a scream full of anger filled the room and everyone present stopped what they were doing to find out what had happened. A group of teenagers dressed in school uniforms consisting of three boys and two girls was surrounding another student who was lying on the ground shaking. However, the scream did not come from the person lying on the ground but from one of the ones who pushed him. Seeing what was happening everyone fell silent. For three seconds. Shortly after, people started talking and laughing among themselves, ignoring what was happening before their eyes. It was a family scene after all. W what are you doing? WH began the person lying on the ground as he tried to get up, only to be kicked back again. Shut up trash. Is that what I should ask? How dare you harass Wendy this morning? A burly brown-haired boy in a loose uniform with ripped muscles yelled at the person on the ground as he hugged the waist of one of the girls with her left hand. That? I didn't do such a thing. I haven't even seen it all. The boy's protest stopped when he was hit again, while the rest laughed with eyes full of mockery. How dare you answer after what you did? Know your place. Are you calling me a liar? You are so cruel. Tatsu, do something I'm scared said the girl with long black hair who was hugging the burly teenager as she brought his body closer and closer to him. Suddenly the sound of the door opening flooded the ears of those present. 
When they turned their heads, they saw the teacher who had just entered. What's going on here? Asked the teacher with a tone that did not give rise to excuses. Professor the boy lying on the ground tried to explain to the professor what was happening only to be rudely interrupted. Teacher this morning me and my classmates saw how Ronald was bothering Wendy and asked him to stop. Even so, when we got to class she started teasing Wendy again and Tatsu got in the way to protect her with such bad luck that Ronald fell on the floor. After that, Ronald began to accuse us that we had attacked him and that we were going to find out when you arrived said the only person in the group who had not gotten up since the beginning of everything that happened. Right, right. Ronald has been bugging me all the time these days. I tried to tell him to leave me alone but he keep doing it. I don't know what else to do, sniff, sniff as if she were an actress. Wendy had stopped laughing and was beginning to shed tears from her eyes as she hugged the burly Tetsa tightly, not wanting to let him go. If this was the first time he saw this scene, Zack would think that Wendy is a poor victim who has already reached the limit and can't take it anymore. Similarly, the teacher was also not very surprised by the girl's performance in front of her. She simply directed her gaze to the boy lying on the ground with a shoe mark on her shirt and asked, Ronald, is that true? No, it's not. They were the ones who attacked for no reason when I, you lie. All of us saw it. How dare you deny it in front of the whole class when he was in the middle of the explanation. Tetsu interrupted him with an angry look. If the teacher was not present, it is almost certain that he would have given him another kick. I am not lying, said Ronald. The teacher closed her eyes for a moment and said in a tired voice, Class is about to start. We'll deal with this later. Everyone goes back to your seats. Seeing that the matter was about to end everyone stopped what they were doing and went to their respective seats to start the lesson. Zack breathed a sigh of relief for a moment, closed the book he had in his hand, and prepared to take out his school supplies. Wait, Miss Keith said the seated boy, Yamato, I have already said that this problem will be solved later. Is there a reason why I can't start my class? Asked the teacher with confusion. Not only she, but most of the people in the class felt shocked. Most of the time the problems caused by the group are Tetsu and Wendy's fault. Yamato rarely intervenes when such a thing happens. Of course, that does not mean that there have never been conflicts in which the rest of the group was involved. When you've been with them long enough, you'll realize that Yamato is the one who should be provoked the least. Yamato, who had been sitting down from the beginning, got up and, as he approached Ronald said, No, of course not. It's just that this behavior is unacceptable. I am sure that Ronald will have to face the consequences of his actions, but it would not be appropriate to act as if nothing had happened and allow people to think that what has happened is not a matter of concern. Zack and a few other people's faces sank upon hearing Yamato's words. The scene before his eyes had already happened several times, but never before had Yamato, the director's son, said anything about it. This is not good. Obviously, this time Yamato did not intend to forgive Ronald. And according to you who are we supposed to do? asked the teacher indifferently but there was a warning tone in his voice. Ronald's attitude towards Wendy is something that cannot be overlooked. Those kinds of performances shouldn't serve as an example for any of us Yamato said unconcernedly as he looked around as if his voice were representative of the whole class. That's why before class starts, I hope Ronald apologizes publicly for what he did to Wendy, otherwise, I'm afraid I can't be close to someone who can't even admit his own mistakes Yamato said with a tone of justice in his voice. It is true. Let him apologize for what he did, Tetsu said excitedly. Wendy next to her also had a trace of joy. Why would they be happy humiliating someone else without a proper reason is something that Zack doesn't he think he would be able to understand ever. Ronald was trying to find someone to back up his story, but he couldn't find anyone willing to defend him. Seeing that everyone was ignoring him Ronald he didn't know what else to do, obviously, he is the victim. Why should he apologize? Ronald didn't he see but most of the class weren't happy with this. Although no one said anything and acted as if such scenes were not happening, the truth is that everyone was paying attention, some people in fear, some in anger. There were even people who were enjoying the atmosphere but the last were a very small number. After all, all the people in the world have different values and ideals. But if a coexistence has been achieved between these different groups, it is because certain common ideas have been found that favor the coexistence of people. Zack knew that most of those present, including the teacher, did not like this senseless violence, and even felt disgusted by it. Still, everyone ignored this scene. This group of five people is composed, considered the popular group, all of them are children or relatives of wealthy and influential people in society. Tetsu is the son of a famous athlete very popular in the world of sports. Wendy is the daughter of the director of a major pharmaceutical corporation. 
The other two who did not intervene on this occasion are Sito and Lorelai, twin grandchildren of the president of an arms company that operates internationally. Finally, Yamato, in addition to being the son of the school principal, is a descendant of an old family with great political influence in the country, and it is expected that once he finishes his studies he will inherit the position of his father. Even if all the people who attend this school are part of high society in one way or another, Yamato and his group are at the top of the pyramid. Nobody wants to face them, much less the five of them together. None of them is a person who would admit the slightest discourtesy, and much less to defend someone who has lost his status. After a confrontation of looks between Yamato and Miss Keed, seeing that the situation was not going to progress, the teacher closed her eyes and said, Ronald apologize. Moments later the environment seemed to freeze and lines of an unknown nature began to appear on the floor of the room. 12. Chapter 3. Heroes by Obligation. Welcome heroes from another world. It was the first thing Zack heard shortly after a bright light illuminated the entire class. After that, he also began to hear the sore voices of his companions, and he knew the reason. Although Zack tried to direct his gaze in the direction in which he had heard that sharp voice, the strong lights that had appeared out of nowhere had completely blinded him. As the angry voices of his classmates began to get louder, his vision began to recover. Before his eyes appeared a scene that he had never seen beyond movies. Hooded men and women were surrounding him and the rest of the students while two men, a robed old man and a middle-aged man in ostentatious clothes watched them from a distance with a smile on their lips. If there was an exit beyond the one behind those men, Zack would have already disappeared from the place. We have summoned you because the demons are threatening the integrity of our world said the middle-aged man while Zack was still trying to make sense of what was happening. The demon lord's troops are in constant conflict with the humans in a battle of endless destruction. Hundreds of soldiers die every day. It was not working. Zack decided to close his eyes for a moment and ignore the speech of the man who had summoned them to a completely unknown place to fight I don't know what demon lord. After analyzing what was happening, Zack came up with three possible answers that made sense. 1. Zack and his companions had been kidnapped by a sect and they are going to turn us into child soldiers to fight against our will against another sect with which they are in conflict. 2. Somehow someone has managed to set up this stage and someone is filming it from somewhere for television as a new entertainment program for all audiences. 3. Zack came to the conclusion that he had gone completely crazy or had ingested hallucinogenic substances and what he was seeing was not real. Those were the only answers that went through Zack's mind that made the slightest bit of sense and didn't involve mysticism and information garnered from F. Asterisk King Comics. However, there was a common problem with all the answers. Time. Zack opened his eyes and looked at the time on his watch, after which he looked at his companions around. The time elapsed from when they were blinded in the hall until they appeared here there was no more than 10 seconds. All the people had the same positions they had when they were in class and those who were sitting in their seats were now on the floor, Zack included. What do you mean we've been summoned? Is this some joke? Don't worry, I'm sure everything will be fine. The voices were getting louder and sounding more and more frustrated. While Zack was busy thinking about the consequences of what had happened, his teammates had gotten over his initial shock and were panicking. The middle-aged man was trying to explain the situation to them through a speech that he had obviously written before without any success. However, all those voices ceased when the students witnessed what happened next. From the hand of the old man who had not said a word so far, electric currents arose that were directed without the slightest delay toward one of the students. Ah! After seeing the poor boy submerged in pain on the ground having difficulty understanding what had happened, neither Zack nor the rest of those present could understand what had happened. Only a thought came out of their heads. Magic! The robed old man gave a step forward, looked around without changing his expression, and said, Dear heroes, we understand that you are confused by the situation you are in right now. However, chaos will not solve anything. Please pay attention to the wise words of Prime Minister Asla. I am sure that when he has finished speaking all your doubts will be resolved said the old man with a calm tone as if he had not been the one who had just electrocuted one of the heroes. A R right? Ahem, as he was saying. You heroes come from another world by the guidance of the gods. While the rest of the students were in shock at what had happened, Zack continued to stare at the students still unconscious on the ground from the shock. As much as he wanted to deny it, all the clues led to a not very flattering conclusion. They had been summoned. Even if Zack wasn't a fan of the comics, they had also been put on his reading list, basically because of the amount of content that existed. Although there were quite a few entertaining ones in the Ice Sky genre, 
The conclusion he came to after multiple readings was only one. I'm screwed up. No matter what kind of summoning it was, the premise was always the same. Kids too young to drive who haven't even graduated from high school are kidnapped against their will and forced to fight in wars in which they had nothing to do, only to be discarded as if nothing had happened, either returned to their world or being killed for being a threat to the current regime, for the greater good. It seems that his assumption of the sect was not too far from the truth. While Zack was busy reflecting on his current situation, the Prime Minister was finishing his speech. Of your strength. Please heroes help us repel the demonic army. Zack looked around to see the effect the speech had had on his classmates. The reactions were varied. Although it must be said that the speech given by the Prime Minister was generic. The people to whom it was addressed had just experienced something out of pure fantasy, and were still alarmed and distressed. Some looked at the Prime Minister with distrust while others were buried in their own fantasies, and imagined themselves as saviors of the world or holders of fame and fortune, never before imagined. And there were also those who still couldn't process what was happening. Please, accompany me to see His Majesty, he is certainly looking forward to meeting you said the old man, interrupting Zack's thoughts. And without waiting for anyone, he turned around and left the room closely followed by the Prime Minister. The supposed heroes looked at each other confused and not knowing what to do until one of them got up and followed in the footsteps of the Prime Minister. Shortly after the whole class left that room while trying not to get lost on the way. Little by little the appearance of the corridors began to change slowly becoming more and more luxurious and the guards that guarded said places were more and more abundant. Zack couldn't tell how far they had walked until the Prime Minister stopped at the ostentatiously large and impractical doors. After that he turned around and said, Before you is the throne room, please wait until you are called to enter and saying this, he left the group and went into one of the side corridors that were nearby, leaving them alone with the old wizard and a certain number of others. Guards who watched them without making a move. The situation in which he found himself could not be considered favorable. But although the students became more and more restless by the moment, the image of the old man who was before them electrocuting one of his classmates was still fresh. Attention! The heroes summoned from another world and the supreme archmage of the royal court and Mac Cadetan Bear are called by the king to appear before his majesty Terence to a voice. Sounded from inside as the doors opened slowly letting them glimpse inside. 12. Chapter 4 Pontiff The doors to the throne room opened in unison allowing the group to enter. The interior will be even more ostentatious than all the corridors that had passed before which, if Sack had not seen this place, he would think that it would be impossible. The room was huge inside it there were about 30 people on the sides and even so the room seemed empty. Everywhere you looked there were extremely garish decorations, the borders of the walls were inlaid with gold, and all the occupants of the room were dressed in gaudy clothes that looked equally uncomfortable. The occupants, presumably the nobles of the kingdom that had summoned them, looked at them coldly trying to analyze them completely. Some looked at them with interest others with derision, and a few simply seemed indifferent. But if there is something that they all had in common it was something that Zack recognized, that air of superiority that enveloped them. Due to the work and influence of his parents, Zack has met many important people in his life, which is why his parents forced him to go to the prestigious institute that he has been attending for three years. Influence, contacts, power. Most of the powerful people he has come to know always had that air of superiority that enveloped everyone in the room as if they were above the rest of living beings. It is difficult to identify it in adults, but in young people, it is easier. If there's one thing Zack has learned in the time he's been at parties, social gatherings, and even in his own class, it's to identify people. What he was seeing was not good. All the people in the room were looking at them as if they were exotic animals. The comparison could not be more precise. Normally when you go to the zoo and see gorillas you are impressed with their strength and appearance. But what if a gorilla throws a banana skin at you? Obviously, you would be angry. After all, how dare a mere animal stain your clothes? Even if you are in awe of them, you are still a human, a superior species. And as a human being, you feel superior to an animal that is at the mercy of other people. These are the looks that the supposed nobles of the kingdom are directing at them. Monkeys trained to entertain them and then forget about them. Zack can guess that his stay here will not be pleasant. They are just mere tools to them. What do you think would happen if a tool doesn't serve its purpose? While Zack was beginning to hyperventilate imagining his future, the old wizard approached the throne, bowed his head, and said, your majesty here I present to you the heroes of another world who have offered to help us against the enemies of the world, the demons. These are the heroes? They don't seem very strong. Look at their clothes, what a curious outfit. 
The moment the archmage finished his words the room erupted in whispers and murmurs among the nobles who continued to watch them. Hmm, good job. All voices ceased as the king began to speak. If the students had been more observant, they might have seen fear on the faces of the younger members of the nobility. Only a couple of keen observers noticed Zack included. Thank you, your majesty, the archmage said, after which he walked to an empty alcove in the room and fell silent. Contrary to the image that Zack and the rest had of what the king would be like, his true appearance will be quite shocking. The king had long hair that reached his shoulders and penetrating eyes that did not admit disrespect even though he was sitting down. It could be seen that he had a strong and tall body, with large muscles that could be glimpsed under his clothes. Oh heroes, I am sorry for all the inconveniences that may have caused you and I begged for your help. Thousands of lives are lost every day. Please help us defeat the demon lord. Despite his emotional words, either the tone nor the expression of the king changed during your speech. It was as if those lives for which he asked for help meant nothing to him. Without giving his spectators time to react, the king continued with his speech. Now we will begin with the ceremony of your majesty of him. If you allow me, I will perform the awakening ceremony. I'm sure the gods would have wanted it that way. The nobles in the room tensed when they saw that someone had interrupted the king. But when they saw who it was, they relaxed. The king stared at the person who had come forward. The person in question was an old man in white and gold robes. Very expensive for sure, but in contrast to the colorful clothes of the people in the room, his seemed almost plain. The king looked into the eyes of the one who dared to interrupt him when he was speaking. After a while, King Terence II said, MMM, if that's what you want Pontiff answered the king without much expression in his eyes. Thank you very much, your majesty replied the pontiff, bowing slightly in the same way that the old wizard had done before. One of the palace attendants approached the pontiff and handed him a white sphere. Then he looked towards the heroes in the same way that a grandfather would look at his grandchildren. Please heroes come closer to be able to perform the ceremony. Neither took a step forward. Seeing this the pontiff did not seem angry. He came a little closer and said slowly. Don't worry, nothing will happen. We just want to see what your class is. Zack and a few others were alarmed when they heard this. Classes? As in the novels? But it is impossible. Although what has happened to us is also impossible. As the students were reacting to the news, a figure slowly separated from the group. Excuse me, but before any ceremony, I would like you to answer a few questions for us, Professor Keith said in a tone neither humble nor arrogant. Yet one could see that she was nervous. Of course, it's normal to be confused, replied the pontiff, still smiling. Seeing that the old man was willing to clarify her questions, Miss Keith seemed to have calmed down enough. I'm afraid some misunderstanding has arisen, she said before continuing. We've heard that we've been summoned to fight an army but none of us are fighters. None of my students know enough to face an armed opponent, much less an army. Hearing the teacher's concerns, the pontiff looked at them with an expression of understanding and said, Do not worry about it. There has been no error. The gods have chosen you for this quest because you know you are qualified. I understand that you are scared, and it is understandable, but you should not fear because the god of light has blessed you and will give you the strength to save us. Upon hearing this, Zack's face sank, just by hearing the words that came out of his mouth he knew what kind of person the pontiff was, a religious fanatic. Zack had already dealt with this kind of person before. On rare occasions, he had to accompany his parents to his office due to problem clients whose cases were taking longer than expected due to the circumstances of the case or the client himself. Once his parents' client was a religious fanatic as the pontiff, he was accused of burning down a place of worship of another religion and causing the death of several people. The problem that his parents had in this particular case was that this guy wanted to testify the truth about what he had done as if they were going to give him an award for it. Zack stared for almost four hours as his parents tried to change his testimony while this asshole yelled at them and called them enemies of God. But the reason Zack remembers him so well was because of what happened next. After hours of discussions, his parents decided to take a break. At that moment that scumbag hit his father from behind with a chair and tried to attack his mother. Fortunately, the firm's security prevented something worse from happening. Basically, they can tie you up and torture you in a room with cameras while half the world watches and it will still be somehow your fault. It is useless to argue with this kind of people, their arguments are based on the will of God. If you don't do what you are told you are disobeying God's will, but if you do what God commands you to do you will be rewarded, in another life. People like him will never listen to arguments that harm them even if you take the time to listen to how impossible and irrational their intentions are. It only will get you branded as blasphemous. As for what happened to that guy, 
Zack's parents did something he didn't expect. They apologized and agreed to do what the fool wanted, letting him proclaim his actions in court. He was sentenced to the death penalty. The teacher tried to ask more questions, but she was interrupted by the pontiff. Child, I understand that you are confused, but I assure you that you have nothing to fear. Please, let's continue with the awakening ceremony. I'm sure it will solve any doubts you have. Miss Keed was silent for a moment, after which she nodded. The old man in a white and gold robe smiled and said, Just put your hand on the sphere I'm holding. Keed did as she said. The moment her hand touched the sphere, light began to pour out gently as her radiance gradually increased. Once the sphere stopped shining more the pontiff said, Status. 12. Chapter 5 Status. 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 Name. Hiramiya Keed. Race. Human. Age. 26. Class. Sword Dancer Level 1. Skills. Teaching Level 7. Memorization Level 4. Martial Arts Level 2. Universal Traduction. Oh, that essay rare class. Sword Dancer. As expected of heroes, the nobles in the room started whispering amongst themselves as they looked at Keed's status. T this is? This is the power that the gods grant to the heroes in order to combat the demon lord. You are the destined saviors. Said the pontiff to the heroes who were still confused by what had just happened. However, something did not seem to fit with the words of the pontiff. The murmurs the nobles were making didn't sound like they were witnessing a miracle from the gods. It sounded like the fact that Miss Keed had a rare class wasn't unique but well, rare. You can now remove the hand child. The pontiff looked at the students and asked, Who is the next one? Me. Get out of the way loser. The anxiety and restlessness of the crowd had been replaced by curiosity and excitement. Almost immediately after hearing the pontiff's words one of the students walked to the front, while Professor Keed returned to the group frustrated that she couldn't get more information. Tatsu walked towards the sphere with his imposing figure, as he pushed away anyone who got in his way. When he got to the front, he put his hand on the sphere without waiting to hear the pontiff's words. The ball began to glow little by little. When it couldn't shine anymore Tatsu said, Status, Status, Name, Segawa Tatsumaki, Race, Human, Age, 18, Class, Warlord Nivel 1, Skills, Fighting Level 1, Universal Traductor, Uhuk, a Tier 4 class. He is one of the companions of the hero. The expressions on the nobles' faces were much more highlighted compared to Miss Keed. It seems that his class was very special. Tatsu, seeing the expressions of the nobles, showed a proud expression. Well, of course. Who do you think I am? He said as he walked towards the others with a posture that wanted to attract everyone's attention. Zack didn't pay attention to that idiot. He was busier analyzing the information he had gleaned from the nobles' reactions. First of all, the classes were divided into levels. Miss Keed's class is tier 2 while Tatsu's class is tier 4. Second, the skills Professor Keed and Tatsu had shouldn't have anything to do with their class. What is a sword dancer supposed to do with the teaching skill? Obviously, those were the skills they had acquired in our world with their own efforts. The universal language skill seems to have been obtained by the summoning, otherwise, there would make no sense in us being able to communicate with the people here. Although Miss Keed is relatively young, the fact that she has a job as a teacher at an elite school not only shows her family's influence, but also her ability to teach. Still, her teaching skill is only level 7. Although Zack doesn't know Professor Keed's academic background, he does know Tatsu. Tatsu is a troublesome student who frequently fights with other people and fights several times a day. The fact that such a person only has level 1 in his fighting skills shows how difficult it is to obtain and level up any skill. Lastly, the nobles seem to have known that one of us would get that class. The hero's companion class. That means that among us there is someone who must have the hero class and that the rest of us, except the hero's companions, are just normal people who will have random classes. Zack watched as another of his companions climbed the stairs and approached the sphere that the old man was holding. That means, status, status, name, Suzumi Hiromi, race, human, age, 18, class, warrior level 1. Skills, universal traduction. That not everyone will have a powerful class. Seeing his class, the nobles were silent for a moment. Then, noise erupted. Ha! What is that class supposed to be? A tier 1 class has appeared among the heroes. A warrior? Our country has wasted resources to bring in a warrior. Trash. The nobles who were previously showering us with praise now show poor Hiromi sneers and contempt. Even some of his classmates, Tatsu included, were making fun of him. He truly is one of the hero's companions. That reinforced Zack's idea more. The heroes the pontiff was referring to are not paragons of justice seeking to eradicate evil. 
They are just people of incomparable power that the kingdom wanted to use for its own benefit. Otherwise, even if the universe was on the brink of extinction, it would not be possible for Tatsu to possess such an apparently important class. The boy was stunned. He was already imagining how the nobles would praise him and how riches and women would bow before him. It is normal for him not to be able to react to what was happening. Prime Minister Asla signaled to the guards and they approached the boy. Hey, W what are you doing? Hiromi asked as the guards took him away. Seeing this, Professor Keed reacted and approached the student, only to be blocked by the rest of the guards. What are you supposed to be doing? Where are you taking it? The teacher asked. Seeing this, the Prime Minister turned to the teacher and said, You do not have to worry. We have seen that all this was a bit shocking for him, so the guards have taken him to get some air. Later you can see him if you want, but we must not hinder the ceremony of the other heroes. While the teacher tried unsuccessfully to see her student, Zack was watching the king and the pontiff. Since that class was discovered, the pontiff acted as if Hiromi did not exist. Even when the guards grabbed his arms to take him away, he did not seem to react. On the other hand, the king's expression didn't change from the beginning, as if none of us were important. Perhaps in his eyes, we are not. It is evident that he is waiting for the hero. Shortly after the ceremony continued, Master Archer and Magic Taylor, and many other classes appeared one by one, some were happy, some were not. Even so, only these two, not counting Tatsu's class, are the only ones that reached tier 3. And we only found out because the nobles can't help but open their mouths every time a class appears. Zack little by little was able to differentiate which were the tier 1 classes and which were not. Each class has its own name. Classes with generic names are tier 1 classes. Warrior, Rogue, Craftsman, Trader, classes that say little about your abilities. For example, Warriors fight the enemy, but there are many possible types of Warriors. Warriors with swords, Warriors with bows, Warriors with spears. The Warrior class is merely a group of people who can fight against a foe. On the other hand, any class that can have its own characteristics is a class of another tier. The Swordsman class is basically a warrior who fights with a sword, but it's still a tier 2 class. Zack still doesn't know exactly what the difference is between a tier 1 class and a tier 2 class, but judging by the nobles' expressions it seems that the difference is big. At least people with tier 2 classes aren't kicked out of the room. What? This is not possible. While Zack was immersed in his thoughts, a scream resounded throughout the throne room. In front of the sphere was Wendy, one of the big five of the institute. Before, Zack saw her holding Tatsu's arm as always while she filled him with praise and looked disdainfully to the rest but. Status. Name. Wendy Smith. Race. Human. Age. 17. Class. Artist level 1. Skills. Instrument mastery level 2. Universal traduction. Wendy has a tier 1 class. 12. Chapter 6 Hero. An artist? Haha. <laughs> this is probably the worst class so far. I can understand that the others have appeared, but why do we need an artist? The nobles mocked Wendy as they had the rest of the low class people. Although the rest of us were used to it Wendy hadn't reacted yet, it was like she couldn't believe what was happening. It was only when the guards closed in on her that she finally reacted. What? This is not possible. Wendy's shriek echoed through the room causing the guards to stop and the voices of the nobles to disappear. Wendy did not notice this and addressed the pontiff, again, sorry? It is obvious that that ball of yours is not working properly. I want to repeat the ceremony. Wendy said to the astonishment of those present. Zack can understand why the guards stopped approaching the pontiff and Wendy. They were just too shocked. This is the throne room of a king of a kingdom. Although the nobles seem to act freely none of them have moved since we entered. Obviously one of the rules in the castle must be not to move from the assigned site. In ancient times, if a lack of protocol was committed in front of the king, it was enough to be executed. This is possibly the first time the guards have witnessed someone yelling at the most influential and powerful people they have ever met. It was only after saying these words that the nobles reacted. Insolent. How dare you speak like that before the king. Tisk, as expected from a commoner, Minister Asa, who had just come to his senses, came forward. Guards, get this individual out of here. Yes, sir. The guards who had been frozen resumed their march and grabbed Wendy. What are you doing? Let go. Contrary to Wendy's complaints. Her guards grabbed one of each of her arms and dragged her towards the door through where the tier 1 classes exited. W wait! Tatsu! Help me Tatsu! Tatsu! -a. As the knights dragged Wendy away, Tatsu looked away without saying anything. No one knew what she was thinking. Wendy's screams grew higher and higher and echoed through the room. How dare you do this to me? Tatsu, are you really thinking of ignoring me? Wait for me I haven't said my last word yet. 
Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Once the door closed, all sound disappeared. A person's voice suddenly echoed through the room, drawing everyone's eyes to him. The pontiff looked up at the heroes and with a calm look asked them with a smile, Who is the next one? For a moment no one moved. However, the ceremony must continue and his companions went up to the pontiff's side to learn about his classes. As there were even fewer and fewer people left, it was inevitable that more companions of the hero would appear. Although nobody knows if that is good or bad. Oh, the companions of the hero have appeared. There is hope in the kingdom. Status. Name. Sasamiya Lorelei. Race. Human. Age. 18. Class. Saint level 1. Skills. Universal traduction. Status. Name. Sasamiya Sito. Race. Human. Age. 18. Class. Sage level 1. Skills. Universal traduction. As Zack watched the nobles, he began to wonder who would have the hero class. The twins had been selected as the hero's companions. Zack is starting to see a pattern here. The attributes that a hero must have are bravery, strength, courage, and kindness. A person with a pure heart who does not back down in the face of adversity. However, this is not a children's story, and based on what we have seen so far the person most likely to be a hero is. While Zack was immersed again in the thoughts of him and the others who were deciding who would be the next among the students, footsteps were heard from the crowd. A young man with glasses came out at a steady pace, approaching the crystal ball. I'll go. There's no point in waiting any longer. Yamato, the star student of the class and president of the student council, approached the pontiff and placed his hand on the sphere. And just as Zack suspected, the person who was the hero is. Status. Name. Haidatsuyi Yamato. Race. Human. Age. 18. Class. Hero level 1. Skills. Swordsmanship level 4. Martial arts level 2. Etiquette level 3. Universal traduction. The least qualified for the position. Oh. Amazing. He is the hero. We have summoned a hero. The throne room seemed to be in celebration with the appearance of the hero yet none of his companions seemed to share that feeling. Even his friends seemed to be jealous of him. While the nobles commented on the appearance of the hero, Zack began to have a headache. If someone asked him who in the world he would like to be the hero Zack would answer everyone except Yamato. Yamato's education is not a problem. On the contrary, his family saw to it that he received a traditional Japanese education being good at both the arts and sciences, even practicing martial arts. The problem is that anyone who knows the Yamato family understands that they are anything but heroic. Anyone who has heard the family rumors of her will stay away from her. In addition, some of its members involved in politics have had the occasional scandal and important accusations. Of course, none have been arrested. However, the rumors continue, but Sak, as a classmate who has been with him for three years, Knows Yamato's personality and some of the things he has done within the school walls, perhaps those accusations are real. Seeing that the hero had appeared, the pontiff's eyes lit up and his smile became even more friendly. Congratulations boy. The pontiff tried to say something else but the prime minister appeared next to him unexpectedly and said, Please hero, come with me to observe the rest of the ceremony with us. Asla practically dragged Yamato toward the other high-ranking figures before the pontiff's gaze. If he was upset he didn't show it, but his eyes didn't leave the hero's back. Then something happened that had not happened before. The king got up from his chair and approached Yamato. Seeing the king get up, the nobles fell silent and the king's footsteps could be heard in the room. The king was not as Zack imagined he would be, contrary to the stereotype of a fat medieval king with beautiful women around him. The figure of the king was more like that of a general who had participated in a thousand battles. He had an imposing aura that put pressure on the people around him. When the king found himself in front of Yamato, he looked into his eyes and said in a powerful voice, Young hero, will you lend us your support to save this world? There was no big speech, no pleas highlighting the importance of the hero's support. However, this simple question only made the atmosphere enveloping the room more serious, as if this was the beginning of one of those stories that would pass from generation to generation. The start of something important. Despite everything Yamato did not seem to feel any coercion, as if the person in front of him was just another person and not the king of a kingdom. Yamato looked at the king in his bluish eyes and replied with a firm voice. It will be a pleasure his majesty. For the first time since they arrived here, the king smiled, put his arm around Yamato's shoulder, turned, and shouted to the nobles. Rejoice because the hero who will bring us prosperity has arrived. Long live the kingdom. Long live the king. Death to demons and their allies. At the king's words, the nobles began to clap and cheer. Let's hold a banquet for our hero, said the king, which was reciprocated with more support from the public present. Zack's eyes widened for a moment, 
as he heard the king speak. He won't dare, right? Zack thought, hoping that what he had predicted wasn't true. The prime minister approached his majesty and said, The dining room is ready to receive the hero and his companions and the food is already prepared. Excellent. Hero Yamato come with me. Today you will sit next to me at the banquet. Thank you for the honor his majesty. Yamato replied as he followed the king out of the throne room. Please, heroes, accompany his majesty to eat. I'm sure you are hungry, said the prime minister, as he prepared to go to that supposed banquet. Following the king were the pontiff and the nobles who gradually emptied the room. In a minute, only the prime minister, those who had not had their ceremony, and some soldiers in charge of making sure that no one entered here were left in the throne room. One moment, 12, chapter 7 worth. The footsteps of the prime minister stopped and looked at the person who had stopped him. Yes? asked the obviously confused minister. What about the people who haven't received the ceremony? Professor Keat asked. What? The prime minister looked at the remaining four people who hadn't yet had a class, Zack included. He seemed like he really had forgotten about them. Don't worry about that. After the banquet, we will continue with the ceremony. Come on. We don't want to be late, said the minister, as he tried to continue towards the room where the banquet will be held when he was stopped again by being grabbed by the arm. The ceremony only lasts a few seconds. I'm sure that when we arrive the banquet hasn't started yet, replied Keed, feeling outraged by the prime minister's attitude towards her. Students. Despite his age, Zack has experienced many things and understands how the world is so few things can arouse his anger. Apparently being kidnapped against your will to be sent to fight a war he has nothing to do with only to be forgotten when his captors have gotten what they want is one of them. Who would have guessed, eh? But wouldn't it be nice to keep his majesty waiting? The prime minister replied as he watched the crowd at the end of the corridor. Professor Keed was going to say something only to be interrupted by someone behind her. If that's the case, why don't you let me continue with the ceremony? After all, with my old bones... It's normal that I'm late for the celebration. The minister turned and seeing the person who was speaking he said, Are you sure Archmage? I didn't want to burden you. Yes I, excellent. Please come with me. It would be a shame to be late. I leave everything in your hands Archmage without letting the mage finish speaking the prime minister left the room accompanied by Miss Keed who seemed to intend to stay. After they left the room the others fell silent. After all, it was hard to forget that this seemingly normal old man had electrocuted one of them ten minutes ago. An awkward silence enveloped the room until the old wizard said impatiently, Well, what are you waiting for? The students reacted and rushed to find out what their class was. There were only four students left who had not received their class. Miss Keed was right. The process was very fast. Twenty seconds later one of the members had received the class from her. Status. Name. Sizemia Airy. Race. Human. Age, 18. Class, Bard Level 1. Skills, Universal Traduction. It was the Bard class. A very common Tier 2 class that was in charge of using music to influence the behavior of the people around it. The old man explained to us. Unlike the pontiff, the old wizard appreciates having more patience and explained his class in detail. Although they may seem simple at first glance, either class was totally harmless. After hearing the old man's explanation, the others seemed to have calmed down a bit and another student approached the old man to find out about his class. This boy was the only foreigner in the class besides Wendy and Ronald, American nationals, and Zack, half Japanese. Zack's father was a Japanese lawyer who met his mother in an international trial. It was a very complicated process in relation to maritime trade. Zack's father lost. After that, Zack's father and mother kept in touch. Little by little they established a relationship and the rest is history. The kid put his hand on the crystal ball and after not being able to shine anymore, his status appeared before the eyes of those who were still in the room. Status. Name. Austin Ramirez. Race. Human. Age. 18. Class. Fire Mage Level 1. Skills. Universal Traduction. Book. Is this a tier 2 class? Augustine asked satisfied. Magic classes are extremely rare. Apart from Sito who had the sage class, only two people had acquired a magic class. One was Magical Tailor, a tailor who used magic for his clothes and imbued them with magical power giving them special characteristics. Wizard robes were made by these classes. Still, it was not a class that had magic as its main concentration. The other person who possessed a magical class was a shaman, a person who summoned the powers of nature spirits to help him in combat. When the nobles saw that class they reacted as if they had seen a tier 3 class. Evidently, the magical classes were more powerful than the others. No, it's a tier 1 class said the archmage breaking his dreams of power and greatness like many before him. 
B but shouldn't the tier 1 class be the mage class? How is it possible that my class is tier 1? The boy asked hoping that his class was tier 2. The treatment was completely different. Normally yes, but there are exceptions in which few individuals possess an extraordinary aptitude in a certain field that allows them to modify their class the archmage spoke. An example would be the tier 1 shield warrior class. This class shows that the warrior has an unusual aptitude for using shields. Those with such classes will have less difficulty raising their class rank to tier 2, acquiring defensive classes like guardian or paladin. Hearing that he could level up his class, the boy hopefully asked, T then can I be like the rest and have the same treatment? Zack paid attention to what the archmage would say next. After all, even if he had a tier 1 class he could reach higher levels. The archmage snorted in your dreams. It's not that easy. If a person with a class of tier 1 wants to reach tier 2 he would not only have to reach level 100 but he would have to possess enough understanding of the class he wants to achieve. The fastest person to increase the rank of his class was the son of a noble who was obsessed with this. The archmage stopped and asked, Do you know how long it took that noble to rank up his class with the resources of his territory? Eh? I don't know, three years? Austin replied not sure of the answer he gave. Five years. That has been the minimum time considered to raise a class from tier 1 to tier 2. That was because it had a mutated class like yours. A normal person would take 10 years with the same resources. And with each tier it becomes more difficult. Having a tier 2 class is already an impressive thing across the continent. F5 years upon hearing the answer the student was deflated. And to think that he would have to work for 5 years to raise his class to the minimum level, that his colleagues flooded him with envy. Zack's complexion turned pale. It took 10 years and a multitude of resources to upgrade a tier 1 class. He and his companions had been called to fight in the war against the Demon King. But the Archmage had already said that having a tier 2 class was extraordinary. Having a tier 1 class was not. Would it really be possible for the kingdom to give them the resources to level up their class and not their own soldiers? Most likely, people with tier 1 classes will be thrown onto the battlefield barely prepared to be cannon fodder. People with tier 1 classes are probably expendable pieces. If you don't have a tier 2 class you can only wait to die. It's already great that you have a class like this. Be grateful for what you have said the archmage as he moved the crystal ball away. Who is the next one? He asked the two people remaining. It will be me the ceremony was ending and there were hardly any students left. Zack didn't see the need to be the last so he offered to do it as calmly as possible but even so, he was a little uneasy. He put his hand on the crystal ball and said status. 13. Chapter 8 Worthless. Status. Status. Name. Zack Mayama. Race. Human. Age. 18. Title. Bookworm. Class. Mage level 1. Skills. Fast reading level 4. Memorization level 2. Universal traduction. Eh? Zack and all those present were surprised. Not only did Zack just get a magic class like his partner, but it was also the normal version of the class. When the Archmage explained Austin's class he also gave a brief explanation of the Mage class. The Mage class is the most basic of the magic classes and, like any normal tier 1 classes, it is the origin of all the others. Any class whose main function is the use of magical powers has its origin in the Mage class. And like all other classes, getting a Magic class doesn't mean you know how to use magic. Just like someone who gets the Swordsman class doesn't know how to use a sword, be it a Magic class or any other class, rigorous training is necessary to bring out the full potential one possesses. That's it, potential. Normally everyone starts with a tier 1 class. The class 1 has reflects the potential one possesses. Anyone can wield a sword, but only a person with the swordsman class, or higher tier of the same branch, can use it to its full potential. Likewise, magical classes are the only ones that can sense and use mana to perform magic. Other classes won't be able to use magic even if you try for years. There are exceptions of course, but that's a minority. Seeing Zack's class, the fire mage instantly perked up. Even if it took him 5 years to rank up, at least he was much better than the people who had obtained a tier 1 class. With a little effort he would soon catch up with his other classmates. Oh said the old man surprised. A title. You don't see much of these. Title? The robed old man did not change his expression upon seeing the previous class. Unlike the nobles, he was not really interested in heroes. He had only offered to finish the ceremony to see if there were any surprises. Apparently, he had not been in vain. A title is the representation of an achievement that few people can achieve. Don't be fooled by the seemingly insulting description of him. All titles carry benefits that will help their bearer. For example, 
the title Combat Maniac helps maintain the optimal state to fight even if you are seriously injured and increases combat efficiency. Anyone can get a title, they are rare, but they are nothing that has not been seen. Said the Archmage while looking carefully at Sack. Titles are not easy to come by. As a magician and leader of the Magic Council, he has some titles. It is precisely for this reason that he knows how difficult they are to acquire. They are symbols of prestige among people. Otherwise, anyone would have a title. The title that Zack has, the Archmage has it too. That's why he was so surprised. If I'm not mistaken, the requirement to acquire this title was to read a thousand books. How is it possible for someone so young to have it? Books are not easy to come by. Each of them is precious and their owners will not share them easily. Even if one had a simple way to acquire books, reading such a quantity is not something a person could do at Zack's age. Has he spent his life reading books? The Archmage thought. The old man looked at his class and thought that he really was qualified for it. A mage requires a lot of knowledge before even casting his first spell. As he had already explained before, merely possessing the mage class does not mean that the person in question knows how to use even the simplest of spells. Anyone who cannot stand hours and hours memorizing knowledge is not qualified to be a true magician. How do you know he makes a title? Zack asked, snapping the Archmage out of his thoughts. Just focus on the title and you will know. Zack did that, he focused on the title and something else appeared other than the status screen. Bookworm. Title is obtained by those who value knowledge and enjoy collecting it. It will be easier to read books. It will be easier to understand the essence of the books you have read. You won't forget the books you have read. Seeing this title again, the Archmage recalls his younger days locked away in his family's library while his brothers were away training with the sword or doing things not befitting a noble. His family was a noble family that had produced many generals who supported the conquests of the kingdom and the fight on the border with the demons. Everyone hoped that his brothers would go into the army, gain merit, and regain the glory that his family name once had. In the end, the glory returned to his house, but it was not due to his brothers. It was the young man who locked himself in his room reading at night by candlelight until the sun came up who made his family important again. However, at that moment his family had lost importance. The search for the magical path had become the only important thing for him to archive. It is undeniable that the title and Zack S. possession has reminded him of himself as a young man. Suddenly the Archmage sighed. No matter how qualified one was, a tier 1 class was just that. Even if he survives the war his destiny will be to reach tier 2 at most. I don't think the king sent them directly to fight, but the time he will give you certainly won't be enough for you to upgrade his class, not even fire mage. The old man felt sorry for these two young magic users, but there was nothing he could do. The archmage looked away from Zack and focused on the last person who didn't have a class yet. Seeing where the archmage was looking, the rest of the people in the room turned their gazes on him. Ronald hadn't said anything since he was summoned, he just looked around him blankly. He was evidently recording the Archmage information, or perhaps he was still in shock over what had happened. How long are you going to watch? asked the old man, somewhat annoyed at making him wait. Eh? What? Ronald said startled. Come here, the Archmage ordered. Unless you're not interested in knowing your class, Ronald suddenly moved. He approached the crystal ball and waited for the ball to shine as much as possible. Meanwhile, Zack was thinking about something the Archmage said. He said that the crystal ball lets us know what our class is. That means we already had our classes before touching the ball. Did we have our classes before we came to this world? No, otherwise we would have classes related to what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So that means that we have received our classes when we have been summoned. How? And based on what criteria? Countless questions filled Zack's mind and yet he seemed the only one worried about getting answers. Status Ronald's voice woke Zack up again, and he focused on the class he had gotten. Status. Name. Ronald Watergate. Race. Human. Age. 18. Class. Smith Level 1. Skills. Universal Traduction. A Tier 2 Class. Hearing the Archmage, Ronald sighed in relief. The Smith class is a Tier 2 class somewhat different from the other crafting classes. Unlike other classes like Blacksmith or Whitesmith, the class allows you to do everything that these classes could do. It is an inclusive class for everything related to smithing. In a way, it's like the direct advancement of the craftsman class. It's a rare class. Ronald breathed another sigh of relief. Not only was his class a tier 2 class, but since it wasn't a combat class, he most likely wouldn't have to fight. Since we're all here, let's go to the banquet, said the archmage as he handed the orb to one of the guards. Without further delay, 
The archmage walked towards the others who had been left behind and he still asked to hear from where he was. Watching the archmage back of him, Zack had a gloomy look on his face. Ronald will be relieved but the worries of Zack and the others who have tier 1 classes had just started. 11. Chapter 9 Idea When Zack and the others arrived at the banquet room, everyone present was sitting chatting, drinking wine, and enjoying the food. The banquet venue was like everything else in the castle, extravagant. Good quality curtains and decorations adorned the room, and in the middle was a long table with a long embroidered tablecloth. The places where everyone sat were divided by status. While the archmage went to the end of the table where the king and Yamato sat and the most influential people of the kingdom among whom were the prime minister, the pontiff, and some elderly nobles who were present at the ceremony. In the middle of the table were the rest of the nobles who were talking with Tatsu, Sito, and Lorelai, the hero's companions, although due to the noise and the distance Zack couldn't hear what they were talking about. At the other end of the table were his companions who seemed to be more focused on the food than what was happening, except for a few like Miss Keed, who wanted more information about what was going to happen to them. One thing Zack noticed is that there were fewer people than should have been. All of those who were here had at least a tier 2 class. Excluding the hero and his companions, of the 28 people who had been summoned, 17 had tier 1 classes, and only 2 people had a tier 3 class. That means that in the hall right now 15 people were missing from the initial 32, not counting Austin and Zack, a little less than half. Obviously the students who had tier 1 classes were in another place, perhaps they were not even given something to eat. If it hadn't been for the archmage who took care of the ceremony, Austin and Zack wouldn't be in this place either. Zack and the others found a space among the rest of their classmates, and went to eat. For someone accustomed to the tastes of the modern world, the food served here was nothing special it was extremely unbalanced still. It was food served to the nobles and the king of a kingdom, indicative, to some extent, of how developed they were, and the tastes of their culture. It had nothing to do with the control of the fire or the quality of the ingredients, but with their preparation. Each dish was flooded with spices and aromas without any control or limit. Some dishes were flooded with salt, while others were infused with very hot spices, and the sweets were white due to the amount of sugar they contained. Only wine and fruit were edible. It was as if this food was prepared for people who had no sense of taste. Still, it wasn't all bad. Due to having eaten a dish prepared by a master chef, str1, the moment this message appeared, Zack understood why his companions, except for one or two who hadn't touched his plate, were eating like pigs. Zack was speechless. This was becoming more and more like a video game. If I'm not mistaken, this unappetizing food must have been prepared by a tier 3 class holder. At this moment he remembered the words of the archmage. Any high ranking class, no matter how useless it seems, is extraordinary. The conversations the nobles were having were also nothing special. Most of them praised each other or the heroes with fake smiles while the younger ones talked about which girl is the most beautiful, or what they have done lately. Frankly it was quite boring. But as someone used to banquets and parties, Zack sat in silence without people noticing anything strange while he paid attention to what they were talking about and tried to memorize the faces of everyone present. When the meal was about to end, the king asked for a moment of silence. At that moment all noises in the dining room ceased and total silence enveloped the place. Attention please. I would like to make a toast to Yamato and his companions, who have come from far and wide to help us with the threat that hangs over us. Health said the king as he drank from his cup overflowing with wine. For the heroes, you are the hope of the kingdom and the king. The nobles followed the king and drank from their cups while praising the king and the heroes. The king then rose from the table and said, On both sides of the room are servants who will guide you to the place where your training will begin. The best instructors in the kingdom will help you become stronger. The king looked at Yamato and said Hero Yamato. The hero class is a special class that can learn all kinds of arts. It is because of this that your training and that of your companions it will be supervised by the great archmage, our beloved pontiff and the captain of the castle guard. They are all professionals who will put the maximum effort into your stay in the castle. I know it's not much, but we will support you as much as possible to face the demons. Just tell them what your type of class is and they'll take you there. Saying this, the king left the room followed by the prime minister and the rest of the nobles. It's still early, they probably have obligations to fulfill. Upon hearing this, Zack's eyes shone. It is evident that the education and resources that will be allocated to the Tier 2 classes are superior to those of Tier 1. No one knows that Austin and I are Tier 1 classes. If we manage to infiltrate ourselves we could become stronger, Zack thought. It may sound crazy, 
but it really isn't. The only people who know the class that he and Austin have are the Archmage, who just left with the other nobles, his two companions, and a few guards who are in the throne room. It's common sense that the Archmage would inform the king of the classes we have, under normal circumstances, but that's completely true. Looking at the attitude of the king and the other nobles the only important classes are the hero and his companions, and the tier 3 classes. Seeing the attitude of the nobles towards the king, he does not seem to be a person who takes care of unimportant matters. So having only tier 1 and 2 classes in our group the Archmage will not inform the king of our classes. Most likely, he will say that the ceremony ended successfully, and there were no surprises. As for the guards, their only function is to guard the throne room. Not only do they not have the authority to speak to the king, but since the Archmage is present they will not even inform their superior of him. Since they are in the throne room, the possibility that they are present in the place where they would train would be negligible. If we were chosen to train in magical arts, most likely they would take us to the place where the Archmage is. But seeing the attitude he has towards us and the king's orders, most likely he will only teach Sido and the rest would be taught by someone else. The only risk is that the wizard teaching Zack and Austin discusses his progress with the Archmage, but it doesn't seem like the Archmage is interested in anyone but the heroes. If the instructor talks about the three heroes he's in charge. But that may happen only after a significant period of time. In the best case that would be when their apprenticeships have finished. Even if they were caught, Zack would rather go to prison than to the battlefield. It's a risk, but I'm sure it's better than what was prepared for the tier 1 classes. The only problem would be convincing those two not to say anything, Zack thought as he looked at his classmates. 12. Chapter 10. Austin. Ari and Ronald. Ari's family owns one of the largest glass manufacturing factories in the country. Although she is not as important as the Big Five, she is the leader of a small group of girls whose families cooperate in her business. Still, she doesn't stand out much. As for Ronald, Cy Zack sighed thinking about what happened to his family. In the first place, they weren't too important but what happened next? Zack put those thoughts out of his head and approached them. Hearing Zack's idea, Austin was delighted. If he could get in with the other tier 2s maybe he could impress some teacher who would teach him and he could get to tier 2 without much inconvenience. Seeing Austin's expression, he knew he had convinced her. Not that he went out of his way to hide it. He had always been a relatively simple guy. In high society, everyone knows everyone. In fact, Zack is able to remember the names of the 600 students who go to his school. It is a basic and necessary skill in that world since you must know who you can offend and who you cannot. Although he is not friends with any of his classmates in particular, Zack maintains a neutral relationship with most of them. Austin Ramirez is an exchange student from the United States. Austin is the grandson of immigrants from Mexico who came to the United States to flee their country. Austin's grandfather was an honest and hard-working person who only wanted a better life for his wife and his future child. Still, life was not easy. As an undocumented immigrant looking to start from scratch, employment options were limited. Low-paying jobs and a humiliating number of hours each day in precarious working conditions caused Austin's grandfather's health to deteriorate rapidly. Even so, he always supported his family in everything he could. Austin's grandfather was always present at important events and supported his son in all his decisions, even if they were not the best. From an early age, Austin's father had been motivated to try new things and persevere through tough times. All that effort paid off and at the age of 12 Austin's father's school noticed his talent for American football. When Austin's grandfather was told the news, he was delighted. He watched his son, learned everything about soccer, and provided him with everything he needed so he could improve. One could say that fortune smiled on them, and for a few years, things went well. Unfortunately, Austin's grandfather's ethical lifestyle caused him to pass away at 35, leaving a widowed mother and 15-year-old son with almost no options. His mother had to get two jobs so they could pay the household bills and even that wasn't enough to cover all the costs they had. Fortunately, Austin's father's talent had already begun to be noticed by talent scouts, scholarships, training material, instructors. The more he improved, the more help was given. Seven years later Austin's father became one of the best soccer players in the country. Austin's father has a remarkable talent, and thanks to that his family was able to get out of poverty and become multimillionaires. Unfortunately, Austin lacks the good qualities of his family. The main reason why there are exchange students from rich and influential families in prestigious foreign schools is that for some reason they cannot study in the schools of their country. Zack decided to remove those thoughts from his head and carry out his plan. It was a relatively simple plan, and upon hearing it Austin quickly arranged to be included. 
Zack would convince Ari and Austin Ronald. Just as Ari was addressing one of the servants Zack got in the way. What do you want? Ari asked in an annoyed tone. It's not that Zack doesn't understand why. Anyone would be angry after what happened to them. Can we talk for a moment? Hmm, I see. Ari said thoughtfully after explaining the situation. Then he looked up from him and cast his eyes on Zack. Then he said with a bright fake smile. Don't worry, I won't say anything about your classes. It's the least I can do for you. After all, no one decides what class they will have. Thank you, Zack said without expressing much emotion. If a different person had been in his position, they would consider Ari an angel fallen from heaven. But Zack knew the reason why he agreed to help them. None of the people here are stupid. Both have received the best possible education from a very young age and know when something suits them and when it doesn't. If there is one thing they have learned, it is that nothing is free in this life. Raiding out Zack and Austin wouldn't help Ari at all. Seeing the attitude of the king who was only interested in Yamato, the possibility of receiving a reward is very low. It's even possible that if she told the truth to the guards and they were taken away by her classmates they would use this opportunity to isolate her and shut her out of the important decisions they were going to make as a group. Instead, helping Zack and Austin can be seen as an investment. The two of them are among the few who have obtained a magic class, which means they should be able to do what others can't. If there is something that he has realized, it is that there are three people more important than the others. The king, the head of the kingdom, the pontiff, a member of an apparently important religious order, and the archmage. That a magic class, no matter the tier, must bring important benefits. Even if their investment doesn't work out and they are captured, Eri can always say that she didn't know they were receiving training meant for tier 2 classes, or that after receiving the class from her she didn't pay attention and went straight to the banquet. Between receiving a pat on the sword and obtaining a debt of gratitude, it is clear which is the most convenient. Please tell me if you need our help with anything, Zack said almost servilely. Still, Zack had to respectfully thank Eri for it. She had nothing to lose, but he did. If for some reason Ari is displeased with them and gives them away, she might lose reducing her chances of surviving on the battlefield. For Ari, it's just a small effort, but Zack is gambling with her life. After thanking her again, Zack said goodbye to her and went to where Ronald was, whom Austin was trying to convince, but, sorry, I can't do what you're asking me to do. Ronald had not the slightest intention of helping them. 10. Chapter 11, Negotiations What do you mean you won't help us? Austin said in an agitated voice. Fortunately, they were in a corner away from the crowd so no one paid much attention to them. I have no interest in helping you fabricate such a lie. Ronald said firmly. You have everything planned. But have you thought about what will happen when these people find out the truth? You cannot hide it forever and when it is known I will also be involved. Austin tried to tell him something. But before he could Zack said. Even if they were to discover us it wouldn't be immediately. With a certain amount of time you can say that you don't remember what classes we had Zack said as he analyzed the situation besides you have a craft class so you'll be separated from us and no one will have no reason to ask you anything. The only thing we ask is that if you see or hear anything from us just ignore it. You won't get in trouble for not remembering us. Hearing this, Ronald's face didn't change at all. But Zack had learned to read others' body language and he knew that his words were having an effect. Think about it. No one knows where the other students who have obtained tier 1 classes are. They may have been sent directly to where we are going. Nobody has told us what is going to happen to them. You cannot know what is going to happen to us. Nobody can. All we ask of you is that if you hear about us while we're training you just ignore it like any other news and don't tell anyone about us. In return, we will owe you a favor. Easy right? Zack finished speaking and looked Ronald in the eye as he ignored Austin next to him who looked like a mix between a person on steroids and an abandoned puppy. Seeing the expression of Austin Zack wanted to sigh. If he could choose he would have done this alone. However, Austin is in the same situation as me which means that if he goes down I go down with him, Zack thought. To be honest, Austin may be the worst and the best person to do this type of infiltration with. This is the time when there is a higher chance of getting caught. Once we get past today the chances of Austin being the cause of getting caught will be greatly reduced. After all, the most difficult way to detect an error in an insider is if that same person forgets that he shouldn't be there, Zack thought while he waited for an answer from Ronald. Ronald seemed to wonder for a moment, but he finally shook his head. I'm sorry, but I'd rather not take any chances, my answer is still the same he said as he turned and walked towards one of the guards to tell him about the two people who shouldn't be here. It looked like Austin was going to panic. They both knew how important it would be to receive more resources to improve their magic classes. 
especially considering that your status seems to depend on them. He hurried over to Ronald, intending for him not to say anything. So you're going to let Yamato get away with it? Or that's what would have happened if Zack hadn't put a hand on his shoulder. The situation was extremely delicate, and Zack was sure that threatening Ronald would not work. Even if they managed to get Ronald not to say anything now, he would most likely tell the nearest guard when we parted ways. No, the situation required a different point of view. If Ronald didn't want to help them, Zack had to make Ronald need his help. Hearing Zack's words, Ronald stopped his steps and glared at Zack with a ferocity that wasn't present before. Or maybe she was just hiding, waiting to explode at the most unexpected moment. What do you want to do, Ronald? Are you going to leave it all behind? Zack's words seemed to resonate with Ronald. He didn't even bother to hide it anymore. The facade of a vulnerable victim that Ronald maintained before everyone, in class, on the street, and in his house, fell for a moment, and in his place. There was only one thing in Ronald's eyes. Hate. A hatred too great for someone his age. If someone saw Ronald now they would wonder how it happened for someone to have a look like that. And yet Zack knew it. All of Ronald's teammates knew about it. It was not new news. Everyone with a certain level heard the rumors. And still, no one did anything. Nobody tried to discover the truth, investigate the rumors or even know how the situation was developing. Everyone was acting, as if nothing had happened. It is in these moments which Zack felt contempt for high society, of which his parents were part of him, of which he was part of him. It was only for a moment, and then the hate in Ronald's eyes disappeared. No, he went back to hiding. It was so fast that Austin didn't notice, and if Zack hadn't been paying attention he wouldn't have seen it. But Zack was paying attention, and he saw it. I have no idea what you're talking about. Now please let go of me. Ronald said as he shook off Zack's hand. Zack didn't insist and withdrew his hand of his own free will. You haven't realized the situation you're in, Zack said. Seeing that Zack kept talking, Ronald's eyes began to fill with annoyance, especially considering that it seems that Zack was threatening him. Zack's next words made that annoyance vanish. The people who would really find themselves in trouble if these people find out isn't you and Ari. It's us, Zack said despite the surprise in Austin's eyes. We are the ones who intentionally deceived this bunch of arrogant idiots right in front of their noses. Do you really think they would be interested in someone who doesn't remember what happened that day? Zack paused for a moment to study Ronald's face before continuing. No, his anger will be focused on us, especially considering that you're not the only one who was there Ronald. The Archmage and more than half a dozen guards were there. If someone finds out, they will focus on them, not you. Amid Austin's confused look, Ronald had already understood what Zack was doing. Zack is putting himself at a disadvantage. He was showing Ronald that he is in control. The people who have the most to lose with this are them. It is obvious that the students of tier 1 classes have been separated from the rest. And judging by the banquet their fate is worse than ours. In the same way, if someone finds out that they have been deceived by two tier 1 classes, the most likely thing is that the thing will not end with a light punishment. That is to say, I am in control. The moment Ronald came to this conclusion, his eyes lit up a little. Seeing this Zack said, I have already said everything I had to say, the decision is yours. Austin let's go. Zack turned around without saying anything else and went towards the maid in charge of taking the magical classes to his new residence. Yeah, wait to? Austin replied as he watched Zack walk away and tried to catch up, leaving Ronald behind. You're crazy? We still haven't gotten him to promise us that he won't say anything. What do we do if he tells someone? Austin said quietly when he saw that they were approaching the servant. Zack didn't say anything and continued walking. As he had already said before he had nothing more to say. There's no absolute guarantee that Ronald won't say anything. But anything else they do say will only serve to lessen their chances. Now they can only bet that Ronald has enough hate to want to use it for revenge. A depressing thought. When they approached the servant who would lead the way, she didn't say anything, she just smiled, bowed slightly as a form of respect, and began to walk out of the dining room. To be honest, Zack was exhausted. Too many pointless things had happened in too little time. From being summoned to another world to fight in a war to having his future depend on an unstable 17-year-old boy. Zack needs time to organize his thoughts. But his parents taught him that everything has its time and if you act later you will have missed potential opportunities. My parents, Zack suddenly thought of them. With everything that's happened in a couple of hours, Zack has been ignoring the entirety of his situation. Will he be able to come home? The king while he was speaking said that they would send them back after the war. But who knows if it will be true. Even if they manage to return, 
No one knows how much time will have passed or if they were still the same as when they left. The headache came back. The only thing Zack wanted right now is to lie down and forget about everything. But he couldn't afford that, otherwise many opportunities will disappear. Not realizing how much time has passed the maiden leading them stopped. Seeing this Zack stopped and looked around her. They weren't in the dining room anymore, they weren't even in the area of the castle they were in before. Although the castle walls can still be seen, they are now outside, in front of them an equally imposing building slightly separated from the rest. The Magic Tower. If you want to see more chapters, visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash DallasWGQXCL8. Chapter 12, POV Ronald. See you, see you tomorrow. Ronald said goodbye to his friends and headed to his house from school. Ronald Watergate is an ordinary student like any other. His father Gustav Watergate owns a London-based textile company. His father's company, founded by his grandfather, was no more than a mid-sized business until his father took control of the company and turned it into an international giant. In a little less than 20 years, the company invaded the international market, becoming one of the most important companies in England. Due to the rapid expansion of the business, his family has to move every time a new branch opens so his father runs it for the first few years before appointing someone in his place and later moving to a new one. Potential Market People would think that Ronald would be sick of traveling from one place to another, but the truth is that he has passed by so often over the years that he was used to it. Others would think that Ronald is a lucky person, his family is rich, and he won't have to work in life if he doesn't want to. They are right, but when you win something you also lose something. I'm home. Ronald said without receiving an answer as he entered his house. Ronald's voice was answered with the eerie silence that permeated the house. As always there was no one to receive him. Ronald was not bothered by the silence, and he went quietly to the kitchen. Contrary to what one might think of the status of Ronald's parents, the house was surprisingly humble. No one would say that people who could buy the entire block of flats the house is on would live here. Due to the number of times that Ronald's family moves over the years. Buying a luxurious home could be considered wasteful. That is why Ronald's parents buy modest houses to live in temporarily, which they reform and sell at a higher price once they have to move again. Although in practice Ronald is the only one who lives in them. It's not like he expected his parents to be here either. The surprising thing would have been if they were at home. After all, the last time he saw them was a month ago. Ronald made himself something to eat and began to watch television. There was nothing interesting just a couple of programs talking about the situation in the country. Ronald watched television without much interest while he ate some dinner, despite being the heir to a fortune. His family taught him to be self-sufficient in case something were to happen to them, although I either expected that day to come so soon. As the hours passed, the sky darkened and the streets emptied of people. In Ronald's house, the only sounds were the low volume of the television and the breathing of a boy who was fast asleep. The next morning the sun came out again, and its rays of light filtered through the cracks in the curtains of all the houses. One of those sunbeams directly hit the eyes of Ronald who was struggling to sleep for a few more minutes. Ring ring ring. Mm mm what? Ronald said sleepily. As the ringing of the phone spread throughout the room, Ronald held out his hand to answer it. Who is it? Ronald Watergate. Yes it's me. Who are you? Good morning. I'm calling from the police department. Your parents have been in a car accident. Ronald? Still there? Ronald answer. Still there? The news came unexpectedly. Ronald's parents were struck by a hit-and-run driver. Both were taken to the nearest hospital to try to rescue them. Unfortunately, none of them could survive. Ronald's mother died instantly while his father died in hospital during surgery. Ronald was devastated. Although he and his parents saw each other very little, that does not mean that they did not appreciate each other. Ronald understood his parents' desire to want his company to be the best and his parents tried to provide him with everything he could possibly need in life. The death of parents is something that no person is prepared for, and Ronald was no exception either. One day everything was going well and the next you find your world has collapsed. Unfortunately, Ronald's problems had only just begun. When an entire company depends on one person and that person disappears, you can't expect things to go well. The shares of Watergate Industries plummeted after the public learned of the deaths of its founders and major shareholders. Investors fled faster than one would have imagined, and rats appeared everywhere trying to profit from the situation. Ronald took a period of absence at school to try to solve the problems, but it was useless. For every issue that was resolved, three new ones appeared. The most difficult thing was that Ronald did not know who he could trust in the company. His parents did not want him to get involved in the family business too early. 
He planned to wait until Ronald graduated from university to start learning about the family business so that he would have time to enjoy and relax before introducing him to the company. In addition, being an international company it was very difficult to control the various branches located in various countries if he did not know their situation in real time. As a consequence, Ronald saw every day how his family company was crumbling day by day. So he regretfully decided to leave the company behind. But not before making sure that everyone who tried to ruin the company paid for it. Ronald took the company accounts and went to an old childhood friend of his mother's whom Ronald had seen several times, who was a senior member of the police department, and handed them over to him for investigation. After delivering the documents, he sold all the shares that his family had in the company. When his parents' friends saw Ronald's appearance, he was horrified. A sleepless night together with the stress to which he had been subjected these months had left a mark on him. Seeing that Ronald asked him for help, he decided to help his friend's son in any way he could. After a few weeks of investigation, the results of the company's accounts were found. The situation was worse than one could imagine. If Ronald had been a little slower he could have gone to jail for scams, theft, fraud, crimes against intellectual property, money laundering, tax evasion, and many more. It turns out that the employees and management positions were more rotten than Ronald thought possible. Among his many actions were the sale of products with poor quality materials, excessive quantity contracts, abuse of authority, and non-payment of raw material contracts, which carried Ronald's signature. That is, the higher-ups had decided to get rich as quickly as possible and let Ronald take the consequences. No one expected Ronald's actions. None of them imagined that Ronald would give up the possibility of refloating his company. Everyone thought that he would try to save what was left of the company from him until the end. As a consequence, when the situation was uncovered, most of them were not prepared to flee with the money and were arrested. That angered a lot of people. In business, especially in big business, connections and favors are essential, which is why businessmen organize and attend parties where they can meet, get to know each other, and help each other. Some of the people who were arrested were related to shareholders and executives of other companies that collaborated with Ronald's parents. That has made them not only see how their friends and family were arrested, but that caused their names and that of their companies to appear connected to this scandal. In addition, when Ronald sold his shares before this corruption scheme was discovered, he caused those who bought them at a low price to try to take advantage of the situation to see how their value was reduced to nothing. Ronald hurt the interests of important people so he was not very favored by them. Since then he was shunned by high society, no matter what really happened. In the eyes of others Ronald is merely the bastard who ruined his family's business after the death of his parents. His situation changed forever. His friends abandoned him and started making fun of him behind his back. His former classmates started bullying him both physically and mentally. And teachers were unaware of the obvious abuse Ronald was enduring. Meanwhile, Ronald endured in silence. He knew perfectly well that the situation would turn against him if he tried to oppose his companions. Ronald's plan was to hold out until graduation and leave the country to attend a university somewhere else, perhaps even start the family business over again. Until he heard an interesting rumor. One of Yamato's uncles had a model exactly like the car that ran over his parents. If you want to read more chapters, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Dallas WGQXZL 8. Chapter 13 Title S. Worth. In an empty library standing by a wooden bookcase was a young man reading a book. His hands could feel the brown leather of the book indicating its age and good care. The rest of the library was plunged into darkness, with books lined up on their respective shelves and the room's chandeliers unlit. The pages of the book were moving slowly in the young man's hands, only illuminated by a candle that was melting little by little. Outside the castle walls a storm was beating down with its raindrops gently hitting the large windows of the library along with the occasional gusts of wind that interrupted that delicate rhythm. The young man seemed to be engrossed in reading, his eyes fixed on the book in front of him with an expression of concentration on his face. In the beginning, there was nothing, so the gods created the world, a place full of beauty and unexplored landscapes, where in every corner there was one wonder after another hidden behind every mountain and forest. When the gods observed their actions, they were filled with pride, and even so, in the midst of such beauty, something was missing, the world was empty. Realizing this, the gods in their infinite wisdom decided to create life. While each god chose to create his own species, not all of them were equally successful. Goblins, orcs, trolls, and some other species were so evil that they fell out of favor with their creators. The great god of light, Garion, 
leader of all the gods, used his hands to mold from nothing a creature that had a small part of his charm, humans. Garion took the stars as inspiration to create a being of light like himself. I formed the spleens for me. Zack decided to skip this part where humans were the most perfect creature in the universe, and everyone else isn't. This was the third book Zack had read, and he knew what he was going to put before he read it. The kingdom in which Zack and his companions find themselves is Parmes, a country with strong nationalism, mainly inhabited by humans, highly warlike, and in constant struggle with its neighbors on the northern continent. The world is divided into five continents, the southern continent which is inhabited by elves, the eastern continent which is inhabited by dwarves and humans, the central continent which is inhabited by elves, dwarves, and humans, the northern continent which is inhabited by demons, and the western continent, which is uninhabitable. All areas of the kingdom, social, literary, artistic, and military, show an aversion towards foreigners, as well as an exaltation of the figure of human beings. Parmes is at the northern end of the central continent, and blocks the connection point between the two continents. Due to its constant war with its neighbors to the north, the country has developed a strong bond of unity around the figure of its King Terence II, together with a hatred of other races. Zack flipped through the pages of the book in his hands trying to find what he had set out to find in the first place. This book didn't even have religion as its main theme and even so, it appears every three pages. Blah blah blah. Elves were created by imitating humans, blah blah blah, dwarves were jealous of human magnificence, blah blah blah. Here, the humans and allied races found themselves hemmed in by the other races, who had used their gifts for violence instead of harmony and cooperation among themselves. For this reason, the god of light Garion, together with those who were still loyal to him, decided to create a unique power for themselves with which they could defeat the traitors and return order to the world, the class system. That is, Zack was finding out about the main difference between his home and this world, the classes. Not all beings in the world have classes. With the information obtained from these books it was difficult to determine the criteria by which species have classes and which do not. But according to what Zack had read, a certain degree of awareness and self-perception is needed by a species to have classes. When an individual has exceeded a certain limit of intelligence, he is given the only tier zero class, infant. No matter what race you are, that will be your first class. Once the system has considered that you have enough maturity, you will be granted your tier 1 class. A higher tier class will never be granted, the only exception is the summoning of heroes, Zack thought while he continued reading. In the case of humans, the infant class is acquired at the age of 1, and your tier 1 class at 8 years. Unlike the infant class, your tier 1 class will vary based on your actions during that period. While your education after birth can manipulate the direction in which your class will focus, there is no certain set of actions by which you are guaranteed to get a specific class. If you were taught about minerals you will probably get classes as a collector or craftsman, and if you instead focus on reading books you can get classes as a wizard or scholar. In the book was a large list of the different classes one can obtain, and their respective progressions. The way to rank up a class is to level up. There are two ways to level up, but they're basically the same. Do everything your class should be able to do. The first way is to do what your class says. If you are a blacksmith, forge weapons. If you are a bard, play music, etc. The level goes up with the practice of your respective class. The second way is to find out what your class can do. For example, if you are a swordsman learning one or several sword fighting styles will increase your level even if you don't attack anyone with it. Similarly if you are a blacksmith, and you learn how to make exotic weapons you will level up even if in your day by day you only forge spears. And for better or worse the second way of leveling up has brought with it an unfortunate consequence. Knowledge in this world is much more valuable than it was on earth. For example, a recipe for a special type of candy may be a baker's family heirloom, or a sculptor's technique is something to take with him to the grave. What is even worse is that due to the difficulty of making books most of the knowledge is transmitted orally from generation to generation so if a person had an accident then, knowledge hundreds of years old could be lost without anyone knowing. Zack looked up from the book and looked around where thousands of books were sitting on the shelves, waiting to be open to share their knowledge. On earth, this would have been a normal sight in any library, but here the presence of these books demonstrates the power and wealth held by the royal family. With a sigh, Zack closed the book he was reading and put it in his place, after which he left the library and headed toward his bedroom. Once he got there he opened the door and lay down on the bed. Zack closed his eyes, exhausted. 
The events that had happened today are something that even in his wildest fantasies he would not believe possible. Zack thought about Ronald for a moment before dispersing that thought, he had already done everything possible, if his bet works out everything will be fine, otherwise Zack will probably wake up in prison, it doesn't make sense to think about it. Zack relaxed his body and got ready to sleep, tomorrow he needed the energy to face his new reality. Zack opened his eyes and suddenly remembered something incredible, he got up for a confused moment, and said, did I just read three books in less than two hours? If you want to read more chapters, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash DallasWGQXZL 8. Chapter 14, Lesson? Knock knock knock. The setting of Zack's room sounded incessant from outside. Hearing this, Zack's eyes slowly opened looking around confused by not recognizing where he was. Who is he? Ronald asked unconsciously. Lord Hero, I am one of the palace maids. They have asked me to take you to the dining room for breakfast. Memories of yesterday began to flow into Zack's mind one after another. After a moment Zack went to the door and said, Wait a minute, I'm going out now. Zack got up from the bed and stretched out his body. The room where he was was nothing special, it could be said that it only had the essentials. The only furniture in the room was a small bed and a small desk with a chair next to it. Still, Zack knew he couldn't ask for more. Currently, he and his companions are at the mercy of their kidnappers, it is best to do what they say for now. When Zack left the room, the maid who was waiting for him leaned freely and began to lead the way. In a few minutes, they reached the dining room. Unlike the central dining room in the castle, the dining room in the wizard building was much smaller. Zack didn't think this was the main dining room, the reason being that there were only a few maids and their companions who had acquired magic classes, except for Sito and his sage class. Zack looked at the three people who were sitting while he approached the table. The food on the table was of a lesser quality than what we were served at the banquet, which means it has less seasoning, which means it is edible. Austin seemed completely out of his element, as he focused solely on filling her stomach. His other two classmates were those who possessed the shaman and magic tailor classes, Dago Shun and Indumiyu. Shun is a boy with short hair and a thin figure, in school, he belonged to the geek group. Miu has pale skin and long hair, and he belonged to the girl group led by Eri. Shun's family runs a supermarket chain across the country, while Miu's family runs a metallurgical factory. None of the people at the table were familiar with the others. They belonged to different groups and their family businesses didn't collaborate on anything so they barely knew each other. Except for the sound of chewing food, either of them talked about anything at breakfast. Little by little, each one finished what they had on their plates. Unlike yesterday's banquet, this breakfast served no purpose other than filling their stomachs. Once the four of them finished eating, one of the servants approached and motioned for them to follow her while the rest of the servants began to clear the table. Austin tried to chat with the maid, but all he got were respectful retorts. It was obviously not the answer he wanted to get. Even so, this was not totally useless. At least Zack and the others were able to obtain some information. The maid, whose name was Amy, told them that they are currently in the capital of the Parmese kingdom, Parma. Amy was born into a small merchant family in the capital. When Amy turned 15 she went to serve a noble house as a servant. By chance at one of the parties organized by that nobleman she managed to impress a palace lady. The next day she was transferred to serve in the castle. Amy's story ended there. But there is a detail of that story that doesn't make sense. Why is Amy here and not serving that girl from her story? Although Zack listened carefully to her story, he couldn't help feeling that the nobles traded her off as if she were a toy. Zack can get an idea of what happened next. Amy served that lady he was talking about as one of her personal servants. However, as time went by, that noblewoman got bored with her company and decided that she no longer wanted her by her side. Although he had already gotten tired of her, he didn't want someone else to play with her so he decided to send her with her common servants. It was just a guess and there was no proof, but Zack felt that it was more or less the truth. Even if she wasn't, the mere fact that a noble with just a few words could make Amy leave everything behind to come to serve here on a whim made Zack take a closer look at the Tremendous power nobles have over the life of the people. Common people. Zack remained silent the whole way and shortly after they arrived in front of a large door that had two servants on either side. Amy approached one of her servants who nodded her head and then directed her gaze to the four students. Please come with me, the wizard is waiting for you. The maid opened the door and entered the room with Zack and the others while Amy and the other maid stayed outside. The room they entered was poorly decorated, it only had a few tables and some chairs inside. To Zack, this room couldn't help but remind him of a classroom. 
At the far end of the room was a man dressed in a purple robe who was reading a book while he was sitting on one of the chairs. When the man saw them arrive he looked from him to them. Oh, our heroes finally show up. He said with a tone full of sarcasm. That can't be good, Zack thought when he heard the tone with which this guy greeted them. Well, what are you waiting for? Take a seat and let's finish this at once. Said the stranger with the same tone of disdain. Hmm, what are we here for? Austin asked. The others had already taken their seats. Although the rest had already figured out the reason, they were all eager to know the answer. Hearing Austin's question, the robed man looked at him with a look of disdain. You're not very bright. It's a miracle how you've obtained a magic class. What are you? Down. Bam. Hearing that response, Austin was about to protest indignantly when a force began to crush him to the ground. The next thing Austin knew he was being crushed to the ground. As Austin tried unsuccessfully to get up, the robed man ignored him and his gaze turned to the others. I am Albert Pergus, a member of the noble Pergus family and a storm mage, one of the most powerful tier 2 magic classes, he said in a proud tone. And as for why I'm here, can anyone tell me what is the most important thing for any magic user? Albert asked as his eyes darted around the room. After a few moments in silence, Albert raised his chin and said, What I supposed. None of you heroes know anything about magic. You don't have the remotest idea what you're doing. You are like babies with a gun, unable to move it one bit. He said as he rubbed them in their ignorance of something they had been in contact with for less than a day. The great archmage has personally ordered me to introduce you to the complex and, for many, unknown arts of magic. The wizard was going to continue when he suddenly heard a growl in the room. After inspecting the place, he saw that Austin was still on the ground unable to move. Oh, Albert snapped his fingers and the pressure on Austin eased. How long are you going to stay on the ground? If you don't get up, I'll make sure you stay there for the rest of the week. Hearing this, Austin quickly got up and sat on a seat. Albert waved his hand and four sheets of paper flew to each of the tables. While you are lucky enough to be blessed with my tutelage, my time is too precious to waste teaching the basics. That is why I have prepared a list of books that you must read by the end of the week. That day we will review the concepts that you should have studied by then, and you will be able to ask any doubts that have arisen. Without giving them time to process the information, Albert left through the door behind him without looking back. By the time the four of them processed what had happened, there was no one else. What has happened? Austin asked. Zack asked himself the same question. If you like the chapter, there are more my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Dallas WGQXCL. 7. Chapter 15. Study Group. Mana is the essence of the world, the primal concept from which the gods created everything into existence. Due to being the initial material of the universe, it can be found everywhere, in nature, in cities, in animals, and even in human beings. Those who can use mana to alter reality are called magic users. In a library located in the building assigned for magical classes, four students stared at the books in front of them with furious concentration. Ah, this is useless. We're never going to finish on time. Austin yelled, Why do we have to study? We are in another world. We are supposed to go on adventures and fight monsters. Instead, we are studying. I'm fed up, Austin said exasperated. Shun and me you didn't seem much different either. And you plan to do it with your head? Shun said. If we don't know even a single spell, how do you plan to fight? We are magicians, not warriors. If we don't learn to use magic once he sends us to fight, we'll be dead. Do you think I don't know that? Austin replied. Stop at once, Miyu said. This isn't what I had in mind when I found out my class either. But Shun is right. If we don't understand what's in these books, we'll never be able to use our classes. Austin and Shun looked at each other for a moment before looking back at the list the magician gave them. But how are we going to learn if we don't understand what's in these stupidly complicated books? Austin asked the others as he looked at words like mana, spirit, and elemental particles. All four have been subjected to modern education, and most of these concepts that frequently appear in pseudoscience are unknown to them. Zack sighed as he looked away from the book he was reading and looked at his classmates. There is nothing wrong with the books that Albert asked you to read. These books describe the concepts of magic, its characteristics, and how it works when a magician interacts with mana, and even describe the techniques by which magicians absorb, purify, and store mana in their bodies. They are ideal beginner books that every magic user should know before they start using mana to cast spells. The problem is the number of books on the list. The list that Albert gave them was not small. There were a total of 15 books. Reading and studying 15 books is not a week's work. It's a semester's work. Zack thinks these books are used as a freshman and sophomore material for wizards who just got their classes. 
It is material for children from 8 to 10 years old to learn about magic. Instead of studying mathematics and geography, children with magical classes are taken to academies founded by the kingdom and learn these concepts. That doesn't mean an adult who has never learned these concepts before can learn a two-year-old's material in a month, let alone a week. Also, there is another problem. Hey, have you seen them? Yes, they are the heroes. They seem normal. They are not that bad. They are not the only people in the library. Zack looked around and saw groups of rogue people looking at them from a distance, some curiously, some disdainfully, some even with defiant looks. From the moment they sat down to study intermittent murmurs have reached their ears from other wizards who were preparing to find and read the books. Honestly, all of this made Zack feel like a zoo animal. The worst thing is that the books could not be taken out of the library, so they had to put up with these murmurs while they tried to accomplish an impossible task. Albert definitely won't expect them to have studied all the books on the list the next time they see him. Most likely he will ask them questions they can't answer, make fun of them and give them more time. Still, it's not all bad. Due to having studied constantly for a period of time, int 1. This is the second time this notification appears to Zack. Obviously, there are additional benefits to learning magic, which serve to continue the study. Zack looked at his status. Status. Name, Zack Mayama. Age 18. Race, human. Title, Bookworm. Class, Mage. Level 1. Stats, Strength, 9. Endurance, 8. Wisdom, 12. Luck, 10. Agility, 10. Intelligence, 15. Charm, 11. Skills, Fast Reading, Level 4. Memory, Level 2. Universal Translation. The crystal ball in the throne room is a magical instrument that allows you to show an abbreviated version of your status to other people, but details like the individual values of your attributes are not displayed. Apparently, attributes also exist in this world. When Zack found out in one of the books he read yesterday he was speechless. This was looking more and more like a video game. Each of the attributes has a unique function. Strength, endurance, and luck are self-explanatory. Agility indicated how fast one can move, but also referred to your reflexes and ability to react. Intelligence shows the ability to process and retain information. Wisdom indicates is more abstract not only indicating the amount of knowledge you possess but also your insight and ability to use that knowledge. Contrary to what one might think, charm is not how attractive you are. Charm is your ability to interact with people and make them trust you. An example of this would be a merchant who tries to convince his customers that his products are better than the competition. An average adult has 10 in each attribute so the attributes of each indicate what kind of life they have led. Zach has never been a big fan of sports and he has always preferred to read at his house than go out so it was to be expected that his physical attributes were low. But there is something he did not understand. Why is my luck 10? Zack asked himself. The fact that he was dragged from his world to participate in a meaningless war in a magical world should be considered lucky. Zack couldn't believe that his luck was so normal. That was even more incredible than finding out that he could increase his stats without leveling up. The other three also received a notification each, which renewed their enthusiasm to study for half an hour. Ah, uh, I cannot anymore, Austin said aloud as he got up from the seat. The others looked at him startled by his unexpected shout. Where are you going? I asked me you. To get some fresh air Austin replied as he walked away from the group. Once Austin left, the library restored calm for a while until Shun got up from the table. I think I'm also going to take a break. I'm a bit dizzy. Seeing that Austin and Shun had left him for now, Miu also got up and said, I'm with you. Zack was left alone at the table. Around him, the murmurs intensified when they saw that the others had left as if to mock that he was there. Noticing this, Zack picked up a book that was on the table and, I continue reading. Zack knows precisely the situation he is in. Not only has he infiltrated among the tier 2 magic classes from where he could be discovered at the most unexpected moment, but at an unknown time he was going to be sent to a battlefield where there's a good chance he won't get out of there. Zack doesn't have time to waste or energy to put up with any kind of feeling that his teammates are feeling about this situation. Every minute is key and there is no time to waste. If you want to see more chapters, check my Patreon. Patreon.com slash DallasWGQXZL 7. Chapter 16. Advance. Due to having studied constantly for a period of time. Int 1. In the end, Austin and the others did not return to the library probably too overwhelmed by everything that has happened and were trying to assimilate what would happen in the future. Zack didn't have that luxury, every second is crucial, and anything that didn't increase his chances of survival was something he couldn't afford right now. When Zack closed the book he was reading for the day he was done, 
The sun had gone down, and there was no one left in the library except himself, and a lone candle next to him. Despite that, Zack had to admit that he had benefited greatly from this reading. Zack hadn't read a book or two, Zack had read almost two-thirds of the books on the list. That's something he would never have believed possible in his world. If it was something that also happens to his classmates, he could understand it. But Zack has seen the steady pace of Austin and the others and it's not that exaggerated at all. Noticing this, Zack couldn't help but remember the only thing that made him different from the others. Bookworm. Title obtained by those who value knowledge and enjoy obtaining it. It will be easier for you to read books. It will be easier for you to understand the essence of the books you have read. You will not forget the books you have read easily. Seeing the title again, Zack is beginning to understand its true effect. If one is used to reading and is willing to challenge oneself, then it is possible to read a whole book in one day, but not fifteen. And Zack had not only read nine books but their contents were also burned into Zack's head. In these moments Zack felt as if he had learned the content of these books a long time ago. Zack had not only read those books, but he had also internalized the information from him. Zack smiled. For the first time since he came into this world, he wanted to laugh, laugh with all his might. Zack restrained his desire, left the book that he had finished reading in his place, and went to his room. The night is still young and there is much to do. When he got to the bedroom that Zack had designated for him, he sat on the bed and crossed his legs. The books that Albert had ordered them to read included the basics of everything a wizard needs to know before casting his first spell. Magic users are those who can use mana and manipulate it to alter the reality around them. The first step to this first the magician has to acquire the mana from the people around him and make it his own. One of the books that Albert included in the list talks only about how to acquire mana. This is thanks to one of the most basic abilities of magic users, meditation. Through meditation, magicians absorb mana from the outside and attract it towards them, assimilating it and making it their own. The last book Zack read before leaving the library included a meditation technique by which someone with the wizard class could acquire mana. Of course, Zack was sure that the meditation technique described in that book was one of the simplest and most basic. The described technique included all the steps explained in a very simple way and had no technical difficulty. Even if you failed to acquire or control the outer mana there would be no negative repercussions. After all, this technique is aimed at children as young as 10 years old, so it would not make sense to teach them a technique that is too complicated or that could put them in danger. The only important feature of this technique is that once you have succeeded and acquired a mana thread this technique can replace sleep. Zack did what he described in the book and closed his eyes trying to feel the mana. Unlike yesterday, the night was clear and there were no signs of rain not even a gust of wind. Little by little Zack was plunging deeper into his own world when suddenly something appeared there. Zack opened his eyes for a startled moment, and the sensation disappeared. When he opened his eyes Zack had no joy, his eyes were filled with an incredible seriousness. Zack closed his eyes again and tried to feel the man again. This time it was easier. There he was, it's as if he hadn't moved all this time, as if he had always been there, waiting for Zack to notice. Without realizing it, his back was sweating. Zack took a deep breath and tried to calm down. With full concentration, his consciousness focused on that sensation and invited her to come to him. The mana at first seemed indifferent to his advances, but little by little the mana seemed more interested in Zack as if he were a tireless suitor in search of the hand of his lady. Zack doesn't know exactly how much time he spent trying to make the mana move. This was a wonderful feeling, all his problems seemed to have disappeared. Zack had never felt so calm. Minutes, hours, days. Time seemed to have lost its meaning as if only mana and mana existed in the universe. Suddenly the mana moved. It was only for an instant. But Zack definitely felt the mana move. Zack refocused on the mana trying to get him closer. Slowly, very slowly, the mana approached Zack. After an agonizing amount of time, the mana was close, very close. If mana could be seen with open eyes then Zack would have it in front of him. With one last effort, Zack dragged the mana towards him. Suddenly Zack noticed something in his body. Without rushing, Zack guided the mana according to the book throughout his body, molding it, and adapting it to himself. After an unknown amount of time, the mana flowed through Zack's body steadily. Zack guided that thread of mana toward his head very slowly. Once the mana settled there, it was as if something had been awakened in Zack's body. He felt better, he could think more clearly, and faster, and even the fatigue seemed to have disappeared. Zack opened his eyes and looked at himself. Everything seemed clearer as if until now he had been watching things on an old TV. Zack opened his status and looked for any changes. 
Name, Zach Mayama. Age, 18. Race, Human. Title, Bookworm. Class, Mage. Level, 2. Stats, Strength, 9. Endurance, 8. Wisdom, 12. Luck, 10. Agility, 10. Intelligence, 15. Charm, 11. Mana, 1 slash 1. Skills, Fast Reading, Level 4. Memory, Level 2. Universal Translation. In his status, a new column had appeared indicating the mana he possessed. He had also leveled up, which was an unexpected surprise. And even so, Zack's face did not show joy but concern. What's happening? How did I get mana? Zack wondered. In the book he had read on the meditation technique, he said that through this exercise one could acquire mana but not overnight. On one of the pages, it was written that on average one needed to use the technique for approximately three months to feel the mana. Zack didn't think his situation was normal. There is definitely a problem somewhere. As for Zack being a genius born in a thousand years. Ha. Huh. Zack would want to laugh in the face of anyone who thought such nonsense was possible. Noticing the mana around you is the most crucial part of the technique. The minimum time to feel the mana using this technique is one month. What had just happened made no sense. No. There was something wrong. Even with ten titles, Zack couldn't have acquired mana at that speed. Still, Zack wasn't going to say anything to anyone. He hadn't forgotten that he was in hostile territory. Knock knock. Zack jumped when he heard the door. He turned his gaze from him and said in the calmest way he could, Who is he? Mr. Hero, please get up. I have been ordered to lead you to the dining room. Without realizing it, Zack had been awake all night. If you like this story, there are more chapters in my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Dallas WGQXZL. 6. Chapter 17. Life in the Castle. Zack and the rest of the group were eating breakfast in the small dining room surrounded by the maids who had led them there. Ah, uh, the same every day Austin complained as he furiously chewed his breakfast while he thought about having to go back to the library to study. It had been a few days since Zack had started meditating and his routine had already been established. In the morning the maids would knock on his door and wait for him to come out to guide him to the dining room where he would join Austin and the others to have breakfast together. Once breakfast was finished, the group went to the library while the servants followed them, where they would study the list of books that Albert had given them. Around lunchtime, Austin, Shun, and Miu got up from their seats to go eat while Zack asked the maid she was assigned, who had been waiting at the library door, to bring him something to eat. After a few hours, Shun and Miu returned to the library until sunset, after which they left who knows where. Zack stayed in the library until nightfall, reading. Once the sun had disappeared from the horizon, Zack left the library and returned to his room where he meditated until dawn. Even Austin has realized that the maids are not here to serve them, but to make sure they don't do anything suspicious or contact anyone without authorization. Shut up now, you are not the only one who is not happy with his situation. Shun shouted loudly, startling everyone present. Every day Austin complains about the situation they were in, but this is the first time Shun has said anything. The last days had been very stressful for them. Not only had they been taken to an unknown place, far from their homes, but also that they had not been able to read even half of the books on the list. The feeling of not having the slightest control over what will happen is stressful. And what are you supposed to do? Austin yelled. Every day is the same. We get up, study things that don't make sense, and go to bed. This is not life, it is torture. Just imagining the mountain of books that awaits them, Austin couldn't help but frown. Zack almost couldn't help but laugh. Among the four, Austin is the person who has spent the least time studying. Even when they were studying together, Austin was distracted most of the time. In the first place, Austin wasn't the type to appreciate a good book, so he displayed a visible reluctance to learn the information they contained, even if they were the path to something as wondrous as magic. In fact, Zack believed that this was the only reason Austin continued to linger every morning. While those two were fighting, Zack ignored them and looked at their status. Name, Zack Mayama. Age 18. Race, Human. Title, Bookworm. Class, Mage. Level 5. Stats, Strength 9. Endurance 8. Wisdom 14. Luck 10. Agility 10. Intelligence 18. Charm 11. Mana 8 out of 8. Skills. Fast reading level 4. Memory level 2. Universal translation. Zack had already finished the list of books that Albert sent them a long time ago. He was currently reading mainly magic books that were in the library, along with a couple of books on general knowledge, history, and geography. Unfortunately, there were no books on politics. Apparently, the nobles of this world prefer to learn as they go when it comes to ruling their territories. That's not a good sign. Except for the books on magic, 
The other books are not in the library of the wizard building, they are in the central library of the castle. Although Zaxasine made watches most of his movements while he is not in her bedroom, she does not limit him at all. Zack was able to visit the central library after informing the maid assigned to him and receiving approval from her supervisor. Unfortunately, since the wizard building is located in a corner of the castle perimeter, and the location is too far away, the time it takes to walk the halls of the palace will not make it a viable option to frequently visit the central library. Despite everything, Zack learned a lot in his brief stay at the library. In this world, a universal currency is used for trade, which is divided into copper coins, silver coins, and gold coins. 100 copper coins are equal to 1 silver coin, and 100 silver coins are equal to 1 gold coin. Copper coins are used in daily transactions, to buy common food or clothing. Silver coins are used for transactions of higher value, such as a weapon or armor of medium quality. Gold coins are used for large transactions, such as buying a house, works of art, etc. Contrary to what Zack initially imagined, there is no adventurer's guild here. However, since everyone has a class, and some form of administration is necessary, there are guilds based on the class one owns to defend their interests. There are the Blacksmith Guild, Carpenter Guild, Artist Guild, and while there are no guilds for people with combat classes, there is a Mercenary Guild, where you can develop your class and earn money. Normally these guilds, except the Mercenary Guild, train people with tier 1 classes with potential, which once trained, work for the guild. The entire society of this world is built on the idea that each one has a task or duty to fulfill when they acquire their class. Someone who possesses the tailor class has no idea of wanting to be anything else. The gods have wanted him to be a tailor, for he will be a tailor. This will make society so closed in a structure that it is easy to control. The reading was fascinating, and Zack would like to do more research on the subject. Unfortunately, Zack has more important matters to attend to than reading about the social structure like researching his class, for example. Although Zack enjoyed reading on various subjects, magic has always been where he has put the most concentration possible. Luckily the covers of all the books are more or less the same, so his classmates haven't noticed that he's been reading books off the list. In the few days that Zack has been studying magic, he has realized two main things. The first is that the study of magic is a very broad subject. Forgetting the existence of magic belonging exclusively to specific classes such as shamanism or invocation. There are endless branches of magic, elemental magic, necromancy, space magic, etc. Some are less complex than others, but not for that reason they are not complicated and deep. The second thing Zack has noticed is that the information offered to them is limited. The wizard building library consists of three floors. Zack and the others are only allowed on the first floor. Although Zack has only read a small portion of the books they have access to, most only cover certain matters superficially. Subjects like creating your own spells, advanced magical theory, or knowledge of complex spells basically don't exist in the area they can access. It's not that there aren't books that teach you how to cast spells, but anything more complex than a fireball just doesn't seem to exist. If Zack isn't mistaken, the zone they can access is the zone for tier 1 magic users. They probably want us to learn the basics before trying anything more complicated. It is impossible for them to just teach them tier 1 knowledge, otherwise, they would be wasting their tier 2 classes. While Zack was imagining how powerful a tier 2 class must be, his fantasies were interrupted unexpectedly. Stop fighting at once, Miu's voice echoed through the room. Even the maids who had been expressionless the entire time seemed to have been surprised. We are all nervous and tired. Zack and I have also been through exactly the same thing. Stop acting like you're the only one with problems. Miu continued as Austin and Shun watched as she vented. We all know that the task assigned to us is impossible. It doesn't matter if we had been awake seven days and seven nights, reading all the achievements was impossible. We don't know what's going to happen to us, the only thing we can do is try our best. Miu finished and ate his breakfast again, although the way her hands were shaking showed that she wasn't as calm as she wanted to appear. When Miu finally finished speaking, Austin and Shun looked at each other in silence for a moment, and each returned to focus on their food. That is, the reason everyone was so tense was that the one-week deadline for reading the book list had already ended. Today they were going to see Albert again, and no one was looking forward to that meeting. Zack finished eating and looked at his classmates. It doesn't matter how much money and influence his family has. After all, they are just teenagers who didn't know exactly what they were supposed to do, Zack included. It is possible that Zack has more doubts than they do. Zack hadn't told anyone any of his secrets, 
either his reading speed nor his ability to increase his mana. Under normal circumstances, Zack could tell that pathetic excuse for a teacher they had and acquire more resources. But that would mean that they would take tests to discover the cause, and they would certainly find out about his class. He couldn't imagine benefiting from that situation. When the group finished eating, one of the servants approached and asked them to follow her. They all knew where they were going, so they got up and followed her in silence. If you want to see more chapters visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash DallasWGQXZL. 6. Chapter 18 Mage Albert Unlike the other time, when they got to the room there was no one. After waiting a few moments, and seeing that no one came, they looked at each other for a moment. I'm sorry. Suddenly Shun interrupted the silence in the room, causing the gazes of the others to turn toward him. I shouldn't have said those things. These days have been like never seen. I was under a lot of stress. He turned to Austin and while he looked into his eyes he said, I'm sorry Austin, I shouldn't have treated you like this. It was not my fault. Just because I was upset doesn't mean you have to constantly listen to my complaints. I'm sorry. Hearing Shun's apology, Austin was ashamed of his attitude and apologized to everyone. For a moment the tension in the room seemed to slowly dissipate. There was even the sound of the door opening. The magician Albert entered the room and without looking at anyone he walked towards his table in silence. Everyone was watching Albert's steps carefully until he got to his table. Once there, Albert finally fixed his gaze on the four students, raised an eyebrow, and said, How long are you going to keep me waiting? The four of them woke up from their stupor and quickly sat up. Although no one liked his arrogant attitude, what he did to Austin last week was still fresh in his memory. Seeing that the four of them sat without saying anything, the magician raised an eyebrow, but he didn't say anything. Alfred sat in his seat at the back of the room and said with a smile, So, I take it you've read the books on the little list I gave you? Zack could see how the question had annoyed the rest of his classmates, and rightly so. That list was anything but small. Seeing that no one answered, Albert's smile became more pronounced and his voice began to take on a mocking tone. What's happening? Why does no one answer me? Could it be that our heroes have not been able to read that little list of books in a whole week of time? Alfred showed no intention of stopping, as he continued to smile the whole time. Even Zack, who knew what was going to happen from the first day he received that list, was starting to get tired of this guy. Zack wondered what his superiors were thinking when they assigned Alfred to teach them magic. Learning and teaching are completely different things. The fact of being able to acquire knowledge easily does not imply that it is easy to transmit it. If Zack could choose his teachers, he would not choose the person with the most knowledge in the subject, but the person who could best make them understand the knowledge they should learn at his level. Just when we were all tired and it seemed that Austin was going to explode from the professor attitude, Albert got up from his chair and asked, Who can tell me what mana is? Without leaving time for us to answer Albert raised his hand. You the gangly one, answer. He said while pointing to Shun. Shun seemed surprised by the sudden change in conversation, but after a moment he replied, Mana is the essence of the world that is found everywhere, wrong Albert said without changing his expression. Shun's face twisted in disgust, thinking that the teacher's teasing hadn't ended. In fact, Zack and the others thought the same. All the definitions in the books they had read had similar definitions of what mana was. The fact that Albert said they were wrong only seemed to mean that he was making fun of the time they had been studying in the library. Again, Albert did not allow them to speak. Mana is the substance by which magicians can use magic. That's all, the rest is irrelevant. Said Albert raising his head proudly. Upon hearing his response, Zack began to have a bad feeling. Sir, if the definition in the book is wrong then where does the mana come from? How is it formed? How does it react to the outside world? Shun began to ask various questions about what they had read in the books. Zack wasn't surprised to hear Shun ask these questions. When they were in his world, Shun belonged to the group of geeks. Although it may sound like they spent their time watching anime and arguing over who would win in a fight between two guys, his parents, members of high society, would never allow that kind of hobby. The group of geeks was made up of students with low physical ability and high interest in topics of an intellectual nature. Physics, chemistry, geography, and medicine are the subjects of his main topics of conversation. If they had not been invoked, in the future that group would have been part of the next generation of scientists. Hearing Shun's question, Alfred gave him a pleased look. That doesn't matter, Albert said. Hearing the answer, the four of them were stupefied. Will knowing those things allow you to cast a spell? Or maybe knowing the nature of mana will prevent your enemy from slashing your throat with his sword? Knowing those things is completely useless. Albert said proud of himself, Zack's fears were increasing. 
Sir, I have a question, Sax said hoping that what he was imagining was not true. Stop calling me sir. From now on you will address me as Wizard Alfred. Ask your question? If that's the answer, why didn't he have those books read? That is the agenda our kingdom specially prepared all the wizard apprentices. Do you think you can teach better than the Archmage? Albert said with a condescending tone. So what will be the next books he will assign us when we finish reading those books? He asked Zack again as he ignored Albert's tone. You do not have to worry about that. I'll take care of that myself when the time comes. For the moment what I have given you is more than enough. Try to learn it for next week, if you can. Albert replied in the same tone. Zack's face changed when he realized that his fears were true. One last question, Wizard Albert. The magician's face showed discontent at having to constantly answer questions. Seeing that Albert's patience wasn't going to last much longer, Zack quickly asked, Wizard Albert, before coming to teach us, what did he do? Finally a meaningful question. Before coming here I was the second vice commander of the magical combat squad under the orders of his majesty. Albert said proudly as he looked at them as if they weren't worthy, he taught them. Zack's face could barely keep up its facade when he heard that answer. Zack's fears had been fulfilled. Enough of questions. Today I'm going to teach you how to collect mana from the environment. After all, you can't use magic if you don't have mana. During this week Zack has been forgetting what is the true objective of this damn kingdom. The kingdom never had the goal that they become great magicians that would help them overcome their difficulties. From the beginning, they were just expendable tools to be used as the king and nobles wish until they get tired of them or are too dangerous, and are eliminated. The kingdom had not sent them a wizard to teach them the mysteries of magic. The kingdom had sent them someone who had no idea of advanced magic theory, and only used magic as a weapon. Albert was a combat magician. If you want more chapter visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash DallasWGQXZL. If you want to know about updates and chat about the novel, hey race my Discord server https colon slash slash discord dot gg slash h64 mf3 y7 6 chapter 19 destiny this is terrible zack thought as he walked down the hall with his four classmates after finishing attending the class this is fantastic austin said as he walked to the front of the group with a cheerful walk and a smile on his face nadia noticed but if zack's parents were present they would know that zack had just given austin a not very friendly look if zack could He'd hit that simpleton for not realizing the situation they're in. Worst of all, Shun and Miu seemed to have believed Albert's nonsense. After all, what he was saying seemed to make sense. What good is it for you to know those complicated theories when you are faced with someone who wants to kill you? Austin and the others may not know the difference between a normal mage and a combat mage, but Zack did. Although a normal mage and a combat mage may have the same magical class, their approaches are completely different. The main difference is that combat mages are mages specialized in using magic on the battlefield. At first glance, combat mages look like upgrades. After all, combat mages focus on using their magic practically, rather than being locked up studying complicated magical theories. At least that's the idea that Austin and the others have after listening to Albert. The truth is not so. Basically, combat mages are mages who have given up anything that isn't useful on the battlefield. For example, a normal wizard when he learns the fireball spell, not only learns the spell, but also knows how to change the size, temperature, speed, and even the number of fireballs. A battle mage only knows how to cast the spell. Zack thought of one of the books in the central library in which he spoke in depth about these types of magicians. Combat mages arose as a result of an issue that arose in the positioning of mages on the battlefield. Traditionally, wizards have always been at the rear of the battlefield. Their role was to use complicated magic formulas to create super spells thanks to the synergy of multiple magicians simultaneously, and cast them on the enemy, slaughtering them. The function of the rest of the classes was to act as a human shield so that the enemy would not approach the formation and attack the magicians. That was the traditional positioning on the battlefield. The problem arose in a war between two small neighboring countries a long time ago. The book that Zack read about it did not correctly specify the date on which that war happened and even the names of the countries that were lost to history. Apparently, the difference in strength between the two countries was quite large. When they arrived at the battlefield, the aggressor country had tripled the number of soldiers and five times the number of magicians than the attacked country. Even if all of his mages were focused on forming a magic shield around his troops, the super spell from the enemy mages would make it useless. At that moment, one of the generals of the invaded country had an idea that would revolutionize the battlefield from then on turning the magicians into a mobile unit. 
The idea was that instead of the magicians being in the rear preparing spells, they would advance with the rest of the army and solve problems that the rest of the troops could not solve in a short time. The plan was for the army to advance fast enough to catch up with the magicians from the opposing country before they cast their combined spell. The plan was a success. Since then, that idea has been used by other countries, causing the military arts to develop without precedent for the next 10 years. There was only one small problem. The number of magicians from the invaded country who survived in that battle was only one-tenth of their original numbers. While in the following years that strategy developed without precedent, it also led to the death of a number of mages never seen before. The situation got to such a point that many magicians came threatening to leave their country if they were sent to the battlefield. Considering that most wizards came from noble families, that was not good. The training of a magician was very expensive. Ordinary families could not afford it. Hay was when the idea of training mages from families without a noble title, in exchange for a tour of duty in the military as combat mages, first arose. They are mages who survive on the battlefield on a daily basis, having to discard anything that doesn't help them survive in that place in the short term. What's the use of learning that if you're dead? That is the mentality of combat mages. Some combat mages have gone so far that they know less than 10 spells. But the most important reason why Zack almost threw the table he was sitting on when Albert explained that he was a combat magician was not because they were going to be sent to the field of combat in the most dangerous position that he could be given. To a magician the reason was quite another. A combat mage was trained to fight non-magical combat classes quickly and effectively. But this is why these mages have a fatal flaw. A standard wizard has to go through rigorous training before they can call themselves a wizard. Combat wizards don't have to go through such training. Because of that, when both types of magicians face each other, the result is only one. Slaughter. From a standard wizard's point of view, his spells were incomplete, poorly varied, and incapable of adapting to his offense. On the battlefield that's not a problem. The standard mages are left behind. The only major combat mage can face is another mage of the same type. But Zack and his teammates find themselves in a different situation. Zack hasn't forgotten that the chance of being eliminated by the time the kingdom has finished using them isn't low. The moment Zack and the others dare to disobey orders or go against the interests of the kingdom, they can be eliminated. Zack had been wondering what method they would use to control them and prevent them from running away. Zack wasn't so naive as hoping that people used to being obeyed didn't have a way to make them obey his orders. At first, he thought that they were going to try to cultivate their loyalty to the kingdom step by step while giving them the best possible treatment as heroes. Now it looks like Zack was thinking too much. Although Zack doesn't know what kind of methods they will use on his companions, looking at the style the nobles have used on him, it is most likely a simple and crude method that takes advantage of their lack of knowledge, while making them lower their guard. With compliments and banal words, the nobles of this realm value honor, duty, and justice as long as it suits them. The moment Zack or one of his companions rebel against them, their masks will fall to the ground as quickly as possible. Zack hasn't forgotten how all of his classmates who had tier 1 classes were forcibly removed from each other by the guards while those bastards jeered. Even now, no one has told them what has become of them. Seeing that his thoughts darkened, Zack shook his head and began to think about something else. Now that I think about it, it's not that bad to have a combat mage as an instructor either. Zack thought trying to think positively. Combat mages have a fairly large hole in their knowledge, which depends on the mage's mindset. And looking at Albert's attitude it's easy to see that we won't be learning magical theory in the future. Despite everything, combat mages can bring practical knowledge that a normal magician cannot. Normally that wouldn't be enough to pick Albert over a traditional wizard, but Zack is different. His degree not only allows him to read at a speed he would never have thought possible, but also he can internalize that knowledge as easily as if it had been taught to him by someone who had mastered said knowledge. While Zack walked with his companions as if nothing had happened, Zack had made a decision today that he had been pondering all week. Fuck this kingdom. Once I've learned as much as possible, I'm out of here. I won't spend a second on the battlefield for these bastards. Zack's steps hadn't changed, but he walked with a new determination. If you want more chapter visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash DallasWGQXCL. If you want to know about updates and chat about the novel, hey race my Discord server, https colon slash slash discord.gg slash h64mf3y7. 6. Chapter 20. Talent. Knock knock knock. Sir, please wake up. It's already morning. The sound of the servant on the other side of the door indicated that it was time to get up and meet the others. 
Zack finished absorbing the surrounding mana one last time before opening his eyes. Zack got up and told the maid to wait a moment. Despite Zack's resolve yesterday, his routine isn't going to change much. All of Zack's actions had always been aimed at making himself as strong as possible. The only thing he has changed is his future plans. And while that means he'll have to make a few modifications to his routine, they're not especially significant. As Zack left his room, the maid leaned slightly toward him, after which she led him back to his destination. As Zack was led to the dining room, his thoughts returned to yesterday's class. Regardless of what kind of magician Albert is, it's clear that he knows enough to teach what is necessary to the level of Austin and the others. Yesterday Albert taught them the method of absorbing mana from the environment, and there wasn't much difference between Albert's method and what was written in the books. Despite this, the lesson included a couple of differences from the book method. When Zack tried to absorb mana last night, keeping yesterday's lesson in mind, he was surprised to find that the absorption from him was a bit faster than before. Despite first impressions, Albert knows what he's doing. Zack's steps quick in thinking about what was going to happen next. He wasn't the only one who heard yesterday's lesson. If Zack is right, tonight Austin and the others have tried to use that technique to absorb mana. Albert said that the time taken to absorb mana is no less than several months. It's time to find out if Zack's crazy absorption is something only his or his teammates have it too. He doesn't think any of them would reveal something that important if they had that ability. Most likely they kept it a secret from themselves, even Austin. Therefore, when asking about it, it has to be done with subtlety. When Zack entered the dining room he already had everything planned. He would act like everything was normal and a few minutes later he would casually ask Miu about his experience trying it. Then Shun would intervene and... Guys I have mana. It doesn't matter anymore. Hearing Austin scream, Zack turned and saw him with a huge smile. And a doggy look that said praise me, praise me. Zack didn't know whether to slap him or pat him on the head. Congratulations Zack said as he approached the table where Shun and Miu were sitting with awkward smiles. You too? Zack asked with his eyes. Shun and Miu nodded as they continued to watch as Austin continued to boast of his achievement. For a moment Zack felt like a professional artist praising his three-year-old son for the drawing he'd made with his fingers. While he was preparing to take some food from the table, Zack couldn't help noticing that one of his servants was absent. Most likely, he was going to inform his superiors about what had happened. The situation is a bit problematic. But at least now Zack knows that this crazy man absorption that he possessed, the others had too. He doesn't know if it's because they were summoned from another world, their classes, or some other situation. The only thing that can be done now is to hope that, when the nobles and the king find out, they will be more valued and give them better resources. Zack wasn't the only one who thought so, the others also expected similar things. When they were deep in their fantasies, the absent servant had returned. Pausing for a moment to catch her breath, she walked over to her table and said, Gentlemen heroes, Wizard Albert would like to see you. Please come with me. The four of them got up and followed the maid. Unlike the previous times, the path they took was different. This time the maid was leading them to one of the gardens at the rear of the building. When they arrived they could see Albert sweating, he had been exercising, or he had come running. Explain to me what I've heard about you absorbing mana Albert said while he was panting. Definitely the latter. We did it, it wasn't that hard. Austin said as he gloated at the instructor's look. Zack took a step back. If there's one thing he's learned in this life, it's not to interfere in a pointless fight. Ha! Huh. As if I was going to believe that, there is a better chance that demons will drop their weapons and surrender begging for mercy, than hope that a fool like you can learn to absorb mana in a day. It's true, I've managed to absorb mana in one day. Austin said with a proud tone. So you admit you're a fool, thought his companions. Ha! Huh. I still cannot believe it. Prove it. Albert demanded somewhat annoyed. Even he couldn't believe that no one could do what took him six months in a single day. Not only Austin but also Zack and the others looked at him in confusion. And how can I do that? Austin asked. Very simple. Just give me your hand. Albert said as he extended his arm toward Austin. Austin shook hands with Albert. Following his instructions. Suddenly, Austin felt a warm current rush from the palm of his hand to the rest of his body. Austin's body seemed to respond to that, and without Austin doing anything, his mana came out to face that warm current. The moment Austin's mana made contact, that warm current quickly withdrew, returning to where it had come from. That's impossible, said Albert, visibly shaken. Without anyone being able to understand what was happening, Albert took Shun and Miu's hands. When Albert withdrew his hands, his expression showed pure disbelief. You really have learned to absorb mana. 
Albert said quietly. Hearing that, Austin also put on a shocked expression and looked at the others. Neither seemed surprised by Albert's statement. They had evidently all learned how to absorb mana. Thinking how he had acted just a few minutes ago, he couldn't help but clench his fists, and his face turned red. Zack saw all this from behind, he didn't want to get closer in case Albert tried to investigate if he had a knack for it. In case Albert used the method he used on the others, he would realize that his mana reserves were much larger than his companions. Despite everything, absorbing mana from the outside is not easy. There are many important points to pay attention to, otherwise you may not make it, or worse, you may hurt your body. There's no way anyone would have gotten it without knowing the method well enough. Although he could explain that he had started to accumulate mana before them, he would most likely have to reveal his title as well. Under other circumstances that would be a good thing, but considering their current situation, the nobles will most likely do everything they can to prevent them from growing in directions they cannot control. The worst scenario is that they realize their true class. Zack shuddered just thinking about it. Wizard Albert, what were you doing before we came? Austin asked suddenly. Albert seemed to have found a way out of the situation so he quickly said. I was training. Brilliant. We can look. Austin asked when he saw the chance to see a real wizard in action. Zack and the others also seemed curious about the subject. After all, the only time they've seen magic since they've been here is when Austin was smashed to the ground. Yes, of course. I will show you what a real magician is capable of, Albert said in the same condescending tone as always. In other circumstances, he would never have agreed, but the previous situation seemed to have shocked him enough to agree. He evidently intended to show off and regain confidence. Follow me. Zack and the others followed Albert as he headed into the castle. Although Zack and the others have been living here for a week, the number of places Zack has visited is quite limited. Apart from his bedroom and his dining room, he spent most of his time in the library reading. For a world much less technologically advanced than where he comes from, Zack has to admit that the bookstore in the Magic Tower has nothing to envy a modern library. A normal bookshelf can hold around 200 books. Although Zack doesn't know exactly how many books are in the Magic Tower's library, he suspects that, under normal circumstances, he wouldn't be able to read them all in 10 years. Zack plans to read them all in a year. After going up a couple of stairs and passing an indefinite number of closed doors, Albert led them to one of the rooms. Inside were various instruments and a couple of training targets. From the marks around them, you could see that they had been used recently. Are you ready? Albert moved a little away from them and positioned himself in the distance. If you want more chapter visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash dallaswgqxcl. If you want to know about updates and chat about the novel, Hey race my discord server https colon slash slash discord dot gg slash h64 mf3 y7 5 chapter 21 magic hand mana control level up 1 Zack closed the book that he had in his hands and returned it to his original place it's been a week since Zack and the others saw albert's demonstration for them a few things have happened since then status name Zack mayama age 18 race human title bookworm Class Mage, Level 8, Stats, Strength 9, Endurance 9, Wisdom 17, Luck 10, Agility 10, Intelligence 22, Charm 11, Mana 20 twentieths, Skills, Fast Reading Level 4, Memory Level 2, Mana Control Level 3, Universal Translation, Zack's reading is going well. Although he's still reading to one magic books, and there's no sign that he's going to get out of there anytime soon, his progress is remarkable. While Zack was looking for another book of his level to read, his mind couldn't help but remember the demonstration that Albert gave them. Are you ready? Albert said as he stood in the middle of the room, in front of him. About 20 meters away there was a training dummy and several randomly scattered aiming targets. In these moments Zack and the others were focused on Albert's movements, wanting to capture each of his movements. For a few moments, the room was silent as the students waited to see their instructor's demonstration. And then Albert moved. That was it. There was nothing else, no bright lights, no magic words. Albert just raised his hand and, boom, the doll exploded. No. Not just the dummy, the target targets on the wall, they all exploded. At that moment, Austin and the others realized how little they knew about magic. Since then Austin, Shun, and Miu have a renewed interest in magic and meditate every night. Austin was especially impacted, cutting down on the time he spent at the bookstore and practicing meditation in the morning as well. In this week Zack has realized several important things. First of all, although his intelligence and wisdom have increased during this week, his increase was less than the previous week. 
That agrees with several of the books he read that said the difficulty increased as your stats got higher. No one knows for sure what limit your attributes can go to, but that limit will increase as you increase in tier. It has been theorized that the cap for tier 1 classes is 100 points, regardless of the attribute. For tier 2 classes it is 200 points, and for tier 3 classes it is 250. With this, you can see that the higher the tier of your class, the lower the limit increase will be. The cap for tier 4 classes is thought to be 300 points, but there have been so few throughout history, and none have voluntarily revealed their status, so there isn't enough data. The second thing Zack noticed was that his endurance had increased. He hadn't done anything special, and most of the time he was reading, so nothing could explain that increase. After carefully investigating his body, Zack came to the conclusion that the mana from his body was passively strengthening his body. The reason why his endurance increased from him and the other attributes did not was because that was the lowest attribute of him, and therefore his increase was the fastest. As time goes by, the rest of his physical attributes should increase as well. Yesterday Albert taught you the mana control method. For the others, this lesson was the first step to being a true magician, but for Zack, this lesson was of even greater value. Zack had already learned mana control shortly after Albert's demo and had been practicing all week. Contrary to mana absorption, the conditions for practicing mana control were much more relaxed so Zack could practice even if he wasn't focused solely on it. Zack this lesson allowed him to appreciate the difference between a traditional magician and a combat magician. Although in other respects combat mages may show deficiencies, their mana control is clearly superior. Albert's technique is fast and efficient and he tries to take advantage of the magician's mana in the best possible way, not allowing the slightest waste. On the other hand, the mana control described in the books was not that refined. Leaving aside the basic parts of the technique, traditional mages passively improve their mana control with the continued use of spells throughout their lives. After all, even if a mage runs out of mana he can just meditate and wait for it to regenerate. For a combat mage, every drop of mana can mean life and death. The second thing Zack noticed was that his mana control technique had gone up three levels in a week. In theory that is impossible. Skills, any skill, take a long period of time to learn. At the rate at which Zack is learning, it would be the equivalent of a first year medical student becoming a teacher with over 10 years of experience after six months. That is not an exaggeration. So far the person with the highest skill level Zack has seen was his teacher, and she was only level 7. For a moment Zack stopped what he was doing and began to think about Miss Keed. Although Zack thinks his time in the magic tower was well spent, he can't help but think of his teacher and the rest of his classmates. Until now he had not received news of what was happening to them, nor of what was happening in the outside world. All the news they receive is controlled, except the kingdom's recent numerous victories against demons which Zack heard from other casual library residents talking to each other. He knew nothing of. Trying to distract himself from sinking into negative thoughts, Zack focused on the task he was going to do, cast a spell. Despite the many spells that lurked within the confines of the library, Zack has so far held back from trying to learn them because his mana and control of him weren't enough. Spells are divided by tier. Tier 1 wizards can cast tier 1 spells, tier 2 wizards can cast tier 1 spells, and so on. Due to the complexity of the spells and the time to perform them, a simplified version was created, faster and with a lower mana cost, for the most useful spells according to the magic community. What Zack is going to try now is not technically considered a spell, some authors consider that there is a lower tier than tier 1, tier 0, while others consider them merely practical applications of mana. In fact, several books in the library are just compendiums of tier 0 spells. It wasn't even hard to find them. The wizards who created these versions did so to make learning, or simply everyday life, easier for other wizards. And wizards who want to hide their knowledge don't consider it important enough. Zack is going to cast the tier 0 spell. The spell that Zack wants to learn is called Magic Hand. Its function is to create an invisible hand using magic that helps carry things. Zack had already memorized the structure of the spell. In this world, spells are made up of nodes. The greater the number of nodes, the greater the difficulty to perform it. The nodes are linked by connections formed by mana in a specific order. To cast the spell all a mage has to do is guide his mana to the nodes in the order of the spell. Zack left the library and went to his room. His classmates had started to reduce their time in the library so he was currently alone. After reaching his room and asking that nobody bother him, he sat down on the chair and placed the pen on top of his table. The maximum weight that he can carry in this spell is around 2 kilograms, 
meaning he can't lift something heavier than a book. A simple and useful spell in daily life, ideal for beginners. Zack closed his eyes and mobilized his mana to form the magical structure. A pattern of the spell had formed in his mind. Eight solitary nodes were floating in the void, separated from each other. Suddenly one of the nodes lit up little by little. When he had reached his maximum point of illumination, a white line came out of it and went towards the other nodes, illuminating them, connecting them, one after the other. Crack. Just as Zack was focusing his mana on lighting up the seventh node, one of the nodes exploded. Zack opened his eyes, confused for a moment, and had a terrible headache. Obviously, something had gone wrong. When a mage fails to form a spell correctly, the mana spent deviates from its original path, and the mage receives a backlash due to the failed spell. Fortunately, the reaction caused by a tier 0 spell is not too serious. In the worst cases, such kickbacks can be fatal. After reviewing his last attempt, Zack realized that the reason the spell went wrong was that he failed to control the amount of mana evenly. So as soon as there was insufficient mana to keep the nodes lit, one of them burst. After a few minutes, the pain had subsided and Zack tried again. Crack. This will take longer than he thought, Zack said in his mind as he endured the pain once more. If you want more chapter visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash DallasWGQXCL. If you want to know about updates and chat about the novel, hey race my Discord server https colon slash slash discord dot gg slash h64 mf3 y7 5 chapter 22 passed in the kingdom of parmes in its capital the temperatures were decreasing with the passing of the hours from the palace windows you can see how the sun slowly begins to fade on the horizon as the sun disappears the light from the candles gradually replaces the natural light in one of the rooms of the castle the last rays of the sun were fading little by little plunging the place into darkness. Zack looked outside for a moment through the window and lit a candle so he could see around him. In front of him, a feather floated gently in the air. Strangely, defying gravity, the feather did not fall to the ground. Seeing the feather in front of him, Zack's tired eyes showed a trace of joy. Status. Name, Zack Mayama. Age 18. Race, human. Title, bookworm. Class, mage. Level 8. Stats. Strength, 9. Endurance, 9. Wisdom 17, Luck 10, Agility 10, Intelligence 22, Charm 11, Mana April 20th, Skills Fast Reading Level 4, Memory Level 2, Mana Control Level 4, Universal Translation, Spells Tier 0, Magic Hand Level 1. After practicing all afternoon, Zack had learned his first spell from him. Zack didn't do anything else, he just stared as the feather magically floated in front of him. Until now, Zack thought that he was dreaming that all this summoning and heroes were a dream, an illusion, something false from which Zack would wake up one day in his house and go to school as usual. Right now, watching that feather float, Zack finally finished accepting his situation. He probably wouldn't come home, this is the reality of him now, and that he is a magician, a real magician. Zack doesn't know why, but he started thinking about his family. Even though he tries to move on with his life, remembering the happy times he spent with them, he can't help but feel overwhelmed by sadness and loneliness. I wish they were here to see this, Zack thought. Zack's parents were especially busy because of his work, but they still tried to find a time of day to be together. It doesn't matter if it was watching a movie or just having dinner together. Zack knew that his parents could be doing other things at the time, but they decided to spend it with him. Remembering the faces of his parents, Zack's shoulders couldn't help but tremble for a moment. Thinking about his life so far, his parents, the school, his classmates, the summoning, the nobles. In everything that is happening, Zack's eyes couldn't help but fill with tears. That night Zack didn't meditate as usual, nor did he practice his new spell, he just sat, resting his head on his arms, watching the feather float in the air, as he swayed slowly until he stood up. He fell asleep. Zack woke up the next morning to the sound of knocking on his door as usual. Ugh. Zack took a moment to realize where he was. The feather that he had floated yesterday was lying on the table as if he had never moved from there. When he got up from the chair he was completely numb, and his body was stiff. This was obviously the result of not sleeping in the bed. Even so, Zack felt lighter than ever, as if a great weight had been lifted from him. When I get to the dining room, Austin and the others were talking animatedly, with smiles on their faces. Zack, come here, Austin said when he saw him enter. What are you talking about? Zack asked though he had an idea what was making them so happy. We were just talking about how he spelled them to teach us in the next class. 
Miyu said cheerfully. Zack nodded. Exactly what he supposed. At the end of yesterday's class on mana control, Albert told them that next week they would teach them his first spell. Although it was still several days away, Austin and the others couldn't help but fantasize about using magic. Maybe he teaches us how to throw fireballs? Shun said as he imagined throwing blasts of fire at his enemies. Maybe he doesn't teach the spell I use at the training ground? Austin said, remembering the scene like it was yesterday. Ha! Huh. In your dreams, Shun replied laughing at Austin's fantasies. What did you just say? Austin said angrily. Zack also considered it unlikely that Albert would teach him that spell. Not to mention that it seemed too advanced a spell for that. It's very likely that that spell had been modified by Albert for his own use. The chance of Albert showing them a spell from his private collection is almost non-existent. Especially taking into account the obsession that the people of this world have with keeping knowledge for themselves. Zack doesn't think for a second that the books in the bookstore are all the books available in the castle. It is very likely that each wizard has a spell pair that they do not share with anyone. Breakfast finished quickly and Zack got up from his seat to go back to his room. He learned his first spell from her last night, and wants to start practicing it as soon as possible. Just when Zack was going to leave, Austin stopped him for a moment. Zack, in the afternoon we are going for a walk around the palace. Would you like to come with us? Thank you, but I was thinking of going to the library to finish reading the books on the list. You go, and have fun. After saying that, Zack turned around and went to the library to study a little more about magical theory, and practice his new spell for the afternoon. Zack understands Austin's intentions, but he has no intention of doing that kind of thing. Otherwise, when he faces a real crisis and wishes he had trained more, it will already be too late. What do you think is wrong with him? Miyu asked as he watched Zack's figure walking away. Since the four of them were summoned to this world, Zack is the person who has had the least contact with the rest even before being summoned. None of the three knew Zack beyond being classmates. To the rest of the group, Zack has always been a mystery. Does matters? If he doesn't want to come to spend time with us, we're not going to force him. Austin replied, annoyed that Zack had turned down his invitation. Austin is right. We can't force someone to be with us if he doesn't want to too Shun told me you after hearing Austin's reply while he got up from the seat. Let's go. Hey, he thought we were going to go exploring after we practiced mana control. Said Miyu, confused by Shun's words. It doesn't matter. We can practice later. To be honest, I'm sick of spending so much time cooped up in here. We need to relax a bit. Austin supported Shun after seeing that he wanted to explore right now. Easy for you to say. You are the least studied of all of us. All you do is try to spy on the night's training. Shun said while mocking him. Be quiet. What I do doesn't matter to you. Austin yelled in embarrassment. Ignoring Austin and Shun fighting, Miu thought about it for a moment, and concluded that what they said made sense. These last few weeks have been very stressful. Everyone needed to relax a bit. Okay, let's go. That's the attitude, Austin said as he walked towards the exit of the building. As the three of them walked through the halls, they could sometimes see other wizards in robes, going from one place to another in a hurry, completely ignoring them. The existence of the heroes is no longer news to the inhabitants of the Magic Tower. When they first came here, the other wizards were always watching them like they were circus animals. Now, except for the maids who follow them everywhere, no one pays them the slightest attention. Miyu and the others tried to talk to the maids, but except for respectfully replying to any questions you have, the maids don't communicate with them. In fact, no one in the building speaks to them except Albert. It's as if they were forbidden to talk to them. When Austin and the others reached the gardens the three of them were silent for a moment. Wow, Austin said, and Miu was in complete agreement. The gardens were spectacular. Plants that they have never seen before are perfectly positioned in the perfect place to admire them in all their splendor. It is as if the garden has been blessed by magical spirits. The three teenagers walked through the palace gardens, admiring the beauty of the place. The sun shines overhead in the clear sky, and a soft breeze caressed the leaves making them move to its rhythm. It's a magic place. Suddenly, Miu and the others heard a voice in the distance. Curious they decided to approach to find out who it was. The closer they got, the better they could identify the voice. The voice was not speaking, it was singing. The three of them stopped in front of an ornamental fountain spouting crystal clear water surrounded by stone benches. Sitting on one of those benches was a beautiful girl in a pretty dress, singing a beautiful melody. Suddenly, the voice stopped, and the person who was singing looked at them. Austin and the others thought the girl was angry for interrupting her. The girl looked at them for a few moments, and a smile began to light up her face. Good morning. Can I help you with something? 
If you want more chapter visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash DallasWGQXCL. If you want to know about updates and chat about the novel, hey race my Discord server, https colon slash slash discord dot gg slash h64mf3y7. 4. Chapter 23, Emily. Wow, I didn't think your world was so amazing, the noble girl said as she listened to the stories of Austin and the others. That's nothing, you should know that when I was on the street. Once hearing young Austin's words she began to recount another of her exaggerated adventures. The girl in front of them was Emily, the lady of the palace that Amy, the servant who guided them for the first time to the room where Albert would meet them, told them. Austin, Shun, and me were somewhat nervous, it was the first time that someone from the palace had spoken to them. Upon learning that they had a mutual acquaintance, Austin, and the others gradually lost their tension and began to relax. In the middle of the palace gardens, Sitting on a bench, Sack's companions told stories from their world to Emily, who listened to them fascinated and with a smile. When Austin finished his story, Shun and Miu were looking at him with mockery. Half the stuff in that story was exaggerated, and the other half was just plain nonsense. They were impressed that Austin could lie like that without changing his expression. Still, the three of them were having a good time. It had been a long time since they had managed to relax like that. They needed it. You have wonderful lives. I'm very envious of you, Emily said when she finished listening to Austin. Emily's eyes had a wistful streak when they said this. I wish I could live such incredible adventures. My father doesn't allow me to go out and see the world. He doesn't even allow me to walk down the street on my own like yours. Emily sighed. The others looked at Emily with pitying eyes. Everything will be fine. I'm sure one day you'll be able to do whatever you want. Me you said as he comforted her. Emily nodded slowly. Thank you for your support, it means a lot to me, she said as she smiled sadly. If only I had a class as amazing as yours and the heroes, I could go out wherever I wanted. It's true that my class is amazing, not everyone has a magical class, Austin said proudly. We all have magical classes, Shun said as he looked at Austin with dead eyes. That's right, Emily asked surprised. Miyu nodded. It's true, we were one of the four heroes who have magic classes. Four? Emily asked as she looked at Austin and the others. Yes, besides us there is another person with a magical class. But he decided not to accompany us when we invited him to come with us Austin said with certainty from Zack. Oh, that's a shame. Hopefully, next time I can meet him. Emily said as she smiled. If Zack had seen this scene he would have turned and run. Not considering the dubious reputation that Amy's story gave Emily, Zack would have had a few questions the moment he saw her. Why did she appear right in the middle of the gardens if so far Austin and the others hadn't met anyone else? Why has she spoken to them? How come her classmates have told you about her world, but haven't heard from Emily? It is a pity that the rest did not find this situation too strange. You don't have to worry about Zack. There's nothing special about someone like him, Austin told him. Austin, Miu yelled at him. I'm just telling the truth. That guy prefers to be alone all the time, and he just ignores us like he's superior to us. Austin criticized Zack mercilessly. That's no reason for you to insult him like that Miu reproached him. You, Austin began to say with a wounded look on his face when he saw that his classmates did not support him. Shun also seemed to want to say something about it. Please stop. I'm sure your friend doesn't think so. There's no need to get upset. Emily said seeing that she was going to start an argument. Hearing Emily's words, Austin stopped and didn't continue what he was going to say. For a moment no one said anything else and a tense atmosphere filled the gardens. Seeing that it was getting late, Austin and the others decided to return to the magic tower. As they left, Emily stayed in the gardens, watching them go, a smile on her face. Austin, Shun, Miu, and Zach Emily said the names of the four in a low voice as she got up and prepared to leave without haste. After saying goodbye to Emily and promising to meet again right here in a couple of days, the group parted company with her, making the return trip in silence. You shouldn't have said that, Shun said to Austin as they were far enough. Why not? I haven't said anything that wasn't true. Austin answered, with every intention of continuing the discussion they had interrupted earlier. Shun looked at Austin for a moment and sighed, exhausted. We have all suffered the same, there is no need to fight among ourselves, Shun said without stopping walking. Zack may not want to associate with us, but he hasn't done anything to us that deserve what you said. The four of us have lost everything. Our families, our friends, our homes. Maybe cutting himself off from everyone else is Zack's way of trying to get over it. Austin opened his mouth to say something, but before he could shun cut him off, 
Tell me Austin, is there any reason you don't like Zack besides rejecting you earlier? Anything, something that justifies what you said before? Asked Sean. Austin was going to answer the question, but as he searched his memory he discovered that he really had no reason. If they were still in his world, Austin would reply that he doesn't need a reason and that he can do whatever he wants. But they weren't in his world, and saying that would just be childish. Shun didn't continue speaking. Austin tried to find the words to say, but nothing came to mind, and for a while, there was only the sound of his footsteps as they walked. Hey, do either of you know anything about Zack outside of school? Just as they were reaching their destination, Miyu asked Austin and Shun a question. The two looked at each other for a moment, and Shun said, No, our social circles were different. I think I saw him at a party, but that's all. Me either, Austin said. My memories of him are from school. Even there he hardly ever spoke to anyone. Miyu said quietly, What do we really know about Zack? After thinking for a while, they realized that they didn't know anything about him. In fact, the first time any of them spoke to him was after he came here. None of us really know Zack. We're almost strangers, Miyu said. Is it really so weird that he doesn't want to come with us? Hearing the question, Shun and Austin fell silent. Austin seemed a bit uncomfortable. When they entered the building, a tense atmosphere surrounded them. They each went to their respective rooms to practice for the rest of the day. When the sky darkened, the three met for dinner. As always, Zack was not with them. The meal consisted of a vegetable stew and some bread. The three of them sat and ate in silence. As dinner progressed, Austin and the others gradually forgot about the previous conversation. By the end of the meal, they were talking and laughing together. For them, this was just another strange day in the other world. Even so, when they went to their respective bedrooms, none of them found an answer to Miu's question. What do we really know about Zack? If you want more chapters visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash DallasWGQXZL. If you want to know about updates and chat about the novel, hey race my Discord server https colon slash slash discord dot gg slash h64 mf3 y7 5 chapter 24 search parma the capital of the kingdom of parmes seemed to be always busy no matter where one looked its inhabitants were always rushing from one place to another under the watchful eye of the soldiers who patrolled the streets the city is a bustling hub of activity where the sights sounds and smells blend into a chaotic yet exotic reality Narrow stone streets lined with imposing military-style buildings fill the streets of the city. These buildings are made of all kinds of materials, wood, stone, bricks, and even glass, which change the further you go into it. Many buildings had flattened roofs that gave the city a new look on both a sunny and rainy day. Houses, mansions, churches, and shops decorate the city, turning it into a canvas of colors for those lucky enough to see it from the highest. As one walks through its streets one can see people from all walks of life going about their business. Craftsmen are busy in their workshops, shaping metal or carving different sculptures, while merchants shout it from their shops, seeking to attract anyone wishing to explore their exotic wares. The streets are occupied by people, cars, and animals, dodging other pedestrians, and looking for space to move forward. But if we had to say which is the place that makes the greatest impression on its inhabitants, they would undoubtedly say the walls of the city. High fortified walls and turrets surround Parma, with the sole exception of a few huge gates that in an emergency would be closed to prevent enemies from entering or leaving. The walls protect the city from a siege, but they also control the people and goods that want to enter it. If you want to enter the city, you will have to go through the gate, guarded by countless guards who scrutinize those who pass through it. Within the walls, the city is divided into sections based on social class. The higher your status and wealth, the closer you will be to the center of the city, where you will reside in imposing mansions filled with servants. With clean and spacious streets, parks, gardens, fountains, and impregnable security. Conversely, the poorest residents live closer to the city walls, where their shadow renders less favored houses unable to receive even a ray of light. In the poorest and least secure areas, the lifestyle of its inhabitants varies somewhat from its more fortunate neighbors. The sun was setting and night had begun to take over. From the horizon, a timid moon began to be glimpsed while the inhabitants of Parma headed toward their homes. The poor conditions in the area led to the creation of slums where disreputable people conducted even more disreputable businesses to survive, so it wasn't very smart to stay out at night. Today is a very special day for the people of the slums, an event that happens very rarely, something that some consider rare while others have never seen in their lives. Even so, either celebrates this event knowing full well that once it is over their situation will likely get worse instead of better. The city guards were patrolling the streets. 
No, it looked more like they were looking for something, and they didn't seem to care how much damage it took to find it. Crash. Eh. The screams of a woman resounded outside as she saw how one of the guards broke down the door of her house while she hugged her children. After looking at the woman for a moment, the guards ignored her and began searching the entire house, leaving some broken furniture behind her. What are you doing? Stop. Dad. Stay away. Scenes like this were repeated throughout the area. Guards search house by house without the slightest delicacy. All those who tried to resist inspection were mercilessly attacked, and those who did not end up dead were arrested and taken away from their families. Armored guards ran through the streets of the slum inspecting every street and nook. Two guards in more luxurious armor than the rest met while they were searching, and they began to talk. Have you found her? An armed guard asked his partner. Not yet. Where could she have gotten herself? If we don't find it, we'll get in trouble. We are already in trouble. Or do you think that if we find her, everything will be solved? His colleague reminded him as he set out to continue searching. The guard clenched his teeth in frustration. Shit! How could she have passed? It should be impossible. How can someone with a tier 1 class kill someone with a tier 2 class? The only time I've heard something similar was in the hero stories? I finished his partner for him. The two guards fell silent. In the first place, they have nothing to do with this matter. How could a couple of tier 3 classes even dare to get involved in something like this? All this trouble was caused by the same reason that most of your troubles occur, the stupidity of the nobles. If any of them had been allowed to express his opinion, they would have been adamantly opposed. Unfortunately, no one asks a pair of guards their opinion, no matter how powerful they are. We can't do anything about it. The young master is dead and if we find her, the duke will take care that we will be next, said one of the guards with total seriousness. The other guard's face also hardened, proving that his partner's words might not be crazy. The duke has never been known to be compassionate, after all. In another corner of the slums, a hidden figure walked through its narrow back streets making as little noise as possible. Suddenly, the figure stopped in front of a corner and came up to the stop. Shortly after hiding, footsteps began to sound in the direction he was heading. The footsteps stopped, and the figure strained his ears to hear the words the guards were saying in the distance. Any luck? No, I haven't seen anyone. This is terrible. Why do we have to do this job? We are city guards, not a noble's private army. One of the guards protested as he leaned his back against the wall. Stop complaining like a newbie. They are orders from above. We both know how things work here. I don't like it either. The other person said, sighing the last part under her breath. By the way, do you know why we are looking for that girl? Asked the third guard. No, I have no idea. I do know. Oh, really? And how can you know? Have you been promoted lately by any chance? Asked one of them skeptically. They were mere guards without any power. All they do is obey orders. No wonder he was surprised by what his friend said. Ahem. It is possible that he heard something when he was resting his eyes in the stables during my shift. The guard answered awkwardly. Have you flirted again? How does the captain find out you're in trouble? The other two laughed at his expression when they mentioned the captain. Please don't tell them I beg the other two. Forget that. Why have we been sent this time? Asked one of them. Apparently one of a noble's slaves escaped while her son was playing with her. Seeing an opportunity to divert the content of the conversation, the guard said it quickly. Is that all a slave? They really don't care about us at all. While the guards were chatting among themselves, the figure was growing impatient. It was only a matter of time before other guards passed through here and discovered her. Just when she was thinking about whether another path was worth it, a scream was heard from ahead. You. Can you know what you are playing? A figure appeared in front of the three and began to yell at them. Captain, we were just, I don't mind. Get back to work. Yes, sir. The three guards saluted and went out onto another main street to search the rest of the houses, followed by their captain, who looked at them without blinking. After a few seconds without hearing anything, the figure came out of its hiding place and continued on its way through another of the narrow streets, now clear of people. The figure directed its gaze to the ground with each step it took forward. Just when he was beginning to think that he was in the wrong place, he saw something in the distance. With hurried steps, the figure reached its destination and found what it was looking for. He ducked to the ground and grabbed what was on the ground. Delicate hands with traces of dirt and blood gripped the manhole cover and pulled with all their might. The lid moved little by little until there was a space big enough for a person to pass through. The figure went into the sewers without hesitation and closed the entrance after getting in. The strong smell invaded the nostrils of the person who was walking through the sewers, empty of guards, without stopping. 
The girl clenched her fists tightly as she hurried without hesitating about which way to go. You will pay me. You will all pay me. The king, the nobles, the guards. You will not escape any. Neither are you, Tatsu. Her voice was only heard by the walls that surrounded her as she constantly moved away from that place. If you want more chapters visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Dallas WGQXCL. If you want to know about updates and chat about the novel, hey race my Discord server. HTTPS colon slash slash Discord dot GG slash H64 MF3 Y7. 6. Chapter 25. Tier 0 Spells. A new day appeared on the horizon at the moment when the sun appeared on the horizon like every morning. The inhabitants of the city were getting up to start a new day, and the capital was beginning to wake up. In the very center of the capital stood an imposing castle surrounded by thick stone walls that silently watched the sunrise. Highly concentrated soldiers patrolled around the castle in a coordinated manner to ensure the safety of its residents. In one of the rooms of the castle, the sun's rays filter through the curtains and inspect the room. One of those rays of light hit the figure with closed eyes sitting on top of the bed. Knock knock. The familiar sound of the door interrupted Zack from the trance in which he had immersed himself while he was meditating. As always Zack finished his meditation and began to prepare for a new day. It's been over a month since Zack and his companions were summoned to this world, which means it's been two weeks since he learned the first spell from him, and things haven't changed much. Zack spends the day in the library, and it should be mentioned that the progress he makes each day never ceases to amaze him. In the afternoons his routine changed. While before Zack continued reading books, now Zack prefers to retire to his room to learn and practice new spells. Finally, at night Zack replaced sleep with a meditation session to accumulate mana. His growth has been remarkable. 7 Spells Zack has learned 7 spells in these 2 weeks. In addition to perfectly controlling most of them, Zack noticed that his memorization skill had finally gone up to level 3. Another detail that Zack noticed is that endurance reached 10 points. Zack noticed the change instantly. He suddenly felt in better shape, and certain things that used to exhaust him now only make him a little tired. That made Zack realize the importance of physical attributes in this world. Even so, he has no intention of training his body, at least for the moment. First of all, although training the body is important, they are magic users. At this stage, they should focus solely on increasing their mana. A master martial arts magician is weaker than a warrior with little training. His classes focus on completely different points. Although it is not all good news. At this time Albert began to teach them basic spells. And although Zack already knew that the teachings of a combat magician could be unbalanced. He didn't imagine that they would reach such a point. While he went to the dining room to have breakfast. Zack began to remember the last class with Albert. What are you supposed to be doing? Albert yelled at Austin. Zack and the others were in one of the training grounds inside the castle. The four of them were sitting on the floor in a corner of the room trying to cast the spell. That? Austin asked confused. What do you mean what? You are moving the mana in the opposite direction. To use the summoning water spell it should be like this. Albert said as he raised his hand. What do you mean I have to move mana like this? Do you think I can see how you move mana in your body? Austin said in exasperation as he tried again. No. You're doing it wrong. You have to concentrate your senses to feel how I move the mana. Otherwise you won't learn. Albert said as he continued with his hand raised. The other three continued to focus on guiding the mana to cast the spell while ignoring Albert and Austin, who seemed to be about to start an argument. Zack, Shun, and Miu already knew about Albert's unreliable teaching method from the previous class. The reason why Austin only realized it now was because the first spell Albert taught them was Spark. Being a fire mage, Austin had no problem learning a tier 0 fire spell. By the way, the others think that Austin's class is flame mage, a tier 2 fire magic class and the direct evolution of Fire Mage. So no one has any doubts about Austin's learning speed. Of the spell Spark. Bad again. How many times do I have to tell you to get it right? The one I'm doing wrong? Hearing the screams of those two, Zack, Shun, and Miu, they looked at each other and sighed. Zack sighed again. During this time, Albert taught them two tier zero spells, Spark and Summoning Water. Considering his experience on the battlefield, it's normal for him to favor spells that are useful there. The spark spell is an elemental spell that allows you to generate a small flame. On the other hand, the summoning water spell belongs to the summoning category. Its function is to bring the person responsible for the spell a small amount of water from another place, such as a waterfall or a lake. There are hundreds of tier zero spells in the library, and unfortunately, Zack doesn't have time to learn them all. 
so he has to analyze each spell carefully before wasting his time instead of trying to learn a spell whose utility is situational. Both spells are extremely useful, and Zack has no problem learning them. The problem is that Albert's teaching method is instinctive. No matter how well Albert knows a spell, his ability to pass it on is nil. It's like those super strong characters in comics that when they teach another they say things like, you have to go pois and then fire and that's it. Zack, Shun, and Miu spent two hours trying to decipher Albert's teachings when they learned the spark spell, before giving up and learning on his own. Fortunately, Zack and his classmates are accelerated learners, otherwise they'd still be trying to make sense of what Albert says. During this time Zack has noticed some gifts regarding his unusual growth concerning his class. Zack and his companions will quickly learn whatever abilities his class should have. All four of them are magic classes so the ability to absorb mana and control it is something that all of their classes should know about. That is why Zack can quickly learn tier 0 spells, which is something any tier 1 mage should have no problem with. One of the most important things Zack has discovered these days is that learning spells is different from learning abilities. Unlike abilities, spells are much easier to learn. Examples of this are the mana control ability and the magic hand spell. It took Zack a couple of hours to learn the spell, while it took him all night to learn how to control the hand. Likewise, despite practicing every day he still hasn't been able to master the mana control skill, one of the basic skills of a magician, which every experienced magician should master. Zack fully learned the magic hand spell in three days. When he approached the breakfast table, Zack greeted his companions and began to eat. Since they came to this world, with the exception of the banquet on the first day, the food has been relatively humble compared to what they used to eat in their world. Despite everything, he expressly took care of the people in the palace so that they did not go hungry. While the others were chatting among themselves, Zack glanced at his status screen. Status. Name, Zack Mayama. Age 18. Race, human. Title, bookworm. Class, mage. Level, 15. Stats, strength, 9. Endurance, 10. Wisdom, 23. Luck, 10. Agility, 10. Intelligence, 28. Charm, 11. Mana, 35 35 Skills, fast reading, level 4. Memorization, level 3. Mana control, level 6. Universal translation. Spells, tier 0. Magic hand level, max. Light level, max. Trip level, max. Spark level max, Deafen level max, Night vision level max, Summon water level 1. Zack hasn't been slacking off. Ever since he came here he has been the pinnacle of efficiency. Seeing his progress, Zack couldn't help but feel a little proud. While they were having breakfast, a servant suddenly entered the room. Zack and the rest of her gazed at her. The servant approached and said something that left the four surprised. Albert wanted to see them. If you want more chapters visit my Patreon patreon.com slash dallaswgqxzl. If you want to know about updates and chat about the novel, hey race my discord server, https colon slash slash discord dot gg slash h64 mf3 y7 5 chapter 26 exploration. Next, on one of the floors of the central building of the castle, there was a strictly guarded room. This room was ostentatiously decorated with all kinds of luxuries, elegant furniture, and superior quality paintings flooded the room. On both sides there are rows of bookshelves with heavy books, filling them without leaving a gap for new books to settle on. At the far end of the room was a large oak table with documents arranged in two rows, while the person sitting in the chair behind the table read them quickly, flipping them from one stack to the other. Knock knock, come in, said the figure seated at the table. Once permission was granted, the door was opened slowly, allowing entry to whoever wished. Prime Minister also entered the room with a heavy breath. He evidently had come here as quickly as possible. Even so, his steps were firm and his gestures followed the noble etiquette perfectly. Once he was exactly two meters away from the king, Prime Minister also asked, What can I do for you, your majesty? For a moment it seemed that his voice was going to fail, but years of accompanying the king by his side allowed him to know what the would tolerate, and what he would not. How is the hero's training going? Asked the king without looking up as he picked up his pen and signed one of the documents he was reading. Knowing the king, the prime minister knew that he was referring only to Yamato and the rest of the tier 4 classes. The others would not be so important as to address them directly. Great, your majesty, said the excited minister. Their growth is something we have never seen before. The warlord has incredible handling of all types of weapons and has started to build up internal energy. And the sage has already learned his first tier 1 spell. They have achieved in a month what many cannot achieve in years. The Prime Minister began to narrate the progress that Sito and Tatsu were making, 
while the king listened as he continued to work on his documents. To other people, this scene could be described as harmonious, but the prime minister knew what was going to happen next. As for the saint, the pontiff has informed us that he has managed to perform healing miracles and is practicing in the cathedral with the wounded people of the capital. Suddenly, the pen in the king's hand stopped writing, and a tense atmosphere filled the place. Asla continued to speak as if nothing had happened but the sudden drop of sweat running down the prime minister's temple indicated that he was not as calm as he appeared. News that the saint was performing miracles on the city's inhabitants could also be interpreted as the church using him to increase its sphere of influence in the capital among the population. The relationship between the crown and the church had always been extremely tense. The king had a natural dislike of anyone who interfered in the control of his kingdom, and the mere presence of the church was something he deeply disliked. So it is normal that the news that the church was using the saint that the kingdom had invoked for his benefit, it was not news that satisfied him. If the king could destroy the church, he would do it without any doubt. Still, in a kingdom in constant war, the church was a necessary evil that helped to restore the population's spirits. Despite the trouble he might cause, the prime minister knew he had to say it. If the king were to find out about this kind of news from other sources, and not from the proper channels, it would have unfortunate consequences. That's how Asla got the job, after all. Fortunately, the prime minister has been with the king for a long time, and he knew what I would do to calm him down. The hero Yamato is even more impressive. His performance in all fields is equal to or better than the rest of his classmates. Whether it is combat, magic, or miracles, his ability in all these categories has reached the level of the others, despite having less time to learn each subject. The prime minister said with a tone of wonder and admiration for the talent. From Yamato, the quill in the king's hand continued to write as if nothing had happened and Alsa couldn't help but sigh in relief inside him. What about the tier 3 classes? Asked the king, interrupting the prime minister's next words. The master archer is receiving instruction from one of the archers of the royal guard, and I have been notified that his progress is excellent. Apparently, his precision is incredible, and he is currently learning various skills related to archery. Said the prime minister after recalling the advances of the tier 3 classes. As for the magic tailor, he hasn't started training him yet. His instructor thought that it would be better if he learned the basic techniques of magicians and learn how to imbue magic into objects before focusing on learning how to weave, said the prime minister with a little fear that the king would be angry with him. No, the king's pen did not stop writing at any time. Obviously, the importance he placed on tier 3 classes was much less. For a noble, having a minion with a tier 3 class is something to be proud of, for a king it is commonplace. If it weren't for the extraordinary growth of otherworldly summoned people mentioned in the ancient palace books, the king might not even have bothered to keep the ones with tier 2 classes. Good, said the king as he finished writing and put his pen down on the table. I want to see his progress personally, said the king, looking into his eyes for the first time in the entire conversation. Of course, the majesty of him. I will order that tomorrow they perform a demonstration of his progress. No, interrupted the king. Send them to a dungeon or send them to exterminate bandits, I don't care, but it has to be real. But his majesty, Asla said, it's only been a month, they're not ready for. The prime minister's words were interrupted by the king's gaze. The prime minister knew what would happen if he contradicted the king again. Do it, yes, your majesty. An expedition to a dungeon? Austin said confused. Apparently, those at the top consider that in addition to training, practical experience is necessary. That is why an expedition to a dungeon near the capital is going to be organized so that you can learn to survive in the wild. Albert replied as he addressed the entire group. Zack and the others were listening to Albert about the details of the exploration. At first, Zack thought to go to the library to study some of the books that he had not finished yesterday. He now found himself hearing that they were going to be sent to fight in a dungeon on his behalf, after having officially learned only two tier zero spells. While Zack was wondering if there was any way to escape the kingdom in the next 24 hours, Austin raised his hand to ask a question. What? Albert said upon seeing Austin's behavior. What is a dungeon? Hearing Austin's question, the eyes of the others fell on him. You're kidding, right? Albert said upon hearing Austin's question. Seeing Austin's goofy face, Albert knew that this idiot had no idea what a dungeon was. Albert raised his hands to his head. Can someone explain to him what a dungeon is? Albert said, too tired to deal with this. Hearing Albert's question, Miu got up from her seat and said, A dungeon is a place where there is an extremely high accumulation of chaotic mana, 
which causes the local fauna to mutate, turning them into stronger and more aggressive versions. These changes cause them to attack the local population repeatedly. To prevent them from doing more damage, the wizards of the kingdom decided to block access to these areas using magic, leaving them locked up. That is why they are called dungeons. Miyu said as if she had memorized the whole book where she read it from. If it's so dangerous, shouldn't they have been exterminated by the people there a long time ago? Austin asked surprised. It can't be done. Even if someone decides to kill those beasts, new animals would flock to the area, attracted by the high mana concentration. Even if they wiped out everyone and didn't allow passage, new monsters would spawn in the area based on the characteristics of the place. To prevent the integrity of the seal from being compromised by too large an increase in the number of monsters, outsiders regularly enter to exterminate those that have appeared since the last extermination. When Miyu finished speaking, she stared at Austin strangely. It's on the list of books we had to read, Shun said, looking at Austin coldly. Shun and Miyu have already finished reading the list of books that Albert had assigned them. At first, it should be impossible, but with the increase in intelligence generated by daily reading, they were able to finish the list a few days ago. Hearing Shun's words, Austin wanted to retort, but he didn't know how to do it. He still hadn't finished reading all the books. That is, and you are going to be sent to clean out a dungeon. Albert said, that? Albert said when he saw Shun's hand raised. Wizard Albert, are you sure there hasn't been some mistake? Frankly, I don't think the four of us are capable of this task. Sack completely agreed with Shun's words. Sending them to a dungeon is exactly suicide. What are you talking about? When I say you're going to go to a dungeon, I don't mean the four of you. Albert replied to the question. For a moment, the four of them were hesitant to hear Albert's words, until they realized what it meant. All the summoned heroes will go to exterminate the monsters in the dungeon. If you want more chapters visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash DaoistWGQXZL. If you want to know about updates and chat about the novel, hey race my Discord server, https colon slash slash discord.gg slash 3DTWVDDX. 2.